All right, so today we're in Saratoga at Walt and Whitman. Uh, right now we are sitting in a beautiful, uh, not brewery, uh, not exactly a bar, though they do have beer up here. It is a coffee shop, which is the Walt part of Walt and Whitman. Downstairs is the brewery. And uh, we're going to be talking to two individuals from that place coming up here in the next few seconds. Are you excited, Dave? Very. Very excited. All right, that's coming up. The Capital Brew Podcast with 20 North Dave and Nick Lee. What's brewing in the 518? All right, we want to uh, welcome both Meg and Keegan onto the show. Meg, I believe you are in head of the marketing department here, correct? Correct. And how long have you been uh, with Walt and Whitman? Uh, since June 1st. Awesome. And uh, Keegan, you are one of the brewers here. Correct. But not the head brewer, no? Uh, no, director of brewery operations. We so. met the head brewer in passing on the way up the stairs. Yeah, it's time for us. Yeah, no, Nick, <laughs> Nick Meyer, we, we'd like to keep him busy. <laughs> well, he does a great job with the beers. Both of you guys do a great job with the beers. Um, right now, what are we drinking, Dave? Um, Come on, time is money. Tell wait, me. Wait, hold on. Tell it's, me. I didn't realize this was a test. <laughs> time is money. Yes, that is and the it's a, And I'm, I'm told it's a Hellas. Yes. Which means... It means yeah. on to you, Keegan. Oh, that's the throwover. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tried to uh, be really lob that one. Uh, so our time is money. Like I said, it's a German Hellas. So light beer, very, very similar to what you'd expect out of a Pilsner. And kind of the way we made our own mark on it is after we lagered it for three months, we actually finished it on New American Oak to just kind of give it a nice little uh, background profile that, you know, pops and helps it make it stand out. Now, here's a question I never asked before. This is just me out there in left field, you know, doing my own thing. Um, so it takes three months to brew this beer, if not more. Most beers take, you know, obviously around that, you know, I would say, what, 60 to 90 days to brew? Um, I mean, it really depends. Uh, it's kind of the age-old debate of ales versus lagers. Ales, you're looking at, you know, two to three weeks. Lagers, you can really push um, and get that time down and shorter but to do loggers right it's it's a couple months and that's kind of where we pulled the name time time is money from no matter what uh, at any point in the process so there's, you, there's no cheating time when you brew or so it takes this took uh three months to to brew how long does it last um, the, the the production that you've produced on average does it well, this is our first batch, um, so it's really kind of hard to say. Obviously, um, you know, still being in our first year, getting a sense of what the local community seems to kind of respond to and what they like and what they're familiar with. But we also try to go and push the envelope a nice. little bit here as well and introduce some new flavors, some new styles. Um, the, the Hellas style is not something that is traditionally oaked. That's kind of how we wanted to make our mark on it. And it's, you know, honestly, I think it's the favorite, my favorite beer we've brewed to date. Wow. And it's gotten very, very good reviews. We have a lot of people sure. coming back for it. So what is a Hellas? What makes it a Hellas? I mean, I'm not, you know, that's one type of beer I don't really, I've never really heard much about. Um, honestly, it is, again, very, very close to um, the, the Pilsners. Um, okay. It's a little lighter. It's just a slightly different grain profile, a little more subdued on the hop end. Um, but, again, the way we're lagering for, for three months, no no real hop characteristics are going to sh- shine through in that amount of time anyway. Um, we used a non-traditional uh, lager yeast, again, to just make, make it our own, put our own little uh, spin on things, but... The light German lager. Okay, now I don't know if we're going to change change direction right here, but out of for my own fear, curiosity, the name of this establishment, the Walt and Whitman. Uh, how did well whoever? How did you guys come up with this name? And why, what's the what's the significance? I'll take that one. <laughs> this um, will not be on the test. <laughs> so basically, um, our ownership is derived from. One family, the Kragers, you know, amazing that you know live here in town, and out the the patriarch, if you will, out of college. I won't say what year for his benefit. Um, was he was an English major? He actually had a, a book deal right out, right out of college, and his favorite writer and his biggest inspiration 
was Walt Whitman. Um, so being able to do kind of come back to his roots a little bit, go for full circle, obviously, again, public figure for kind of trademark copyright reasons, became the Walt Cafe upstairs, Whitman Brewing downstairs, downstairs. We got to just kind of shove that ampersand in right there and everything became okay. Nice. <laughs> now, for those of you who are not familiar with this brewery or cafe, we're in the old Saratogian building which is, I think most people will remember it's been here for a long time, even though the paper hasn't been here for a little while. Most people who have been to downtown Saratoga are familiar with the, the actual building. Yeah, it's a beautiful sunny day here in uh, Saratoga today. And if we look out the window, obviously, there's the police department right across the street. I wasn't going to bring that up, yeah. and you know, even though I knew it was right behind <laughs> us. The, what, what is this across the street up. here? It says the night owl, and then up in the window it says the... I think the old metro used to be over there. Yeah. Tacos. Right? It was the metro Mm -hmm. was over there. Great parties when Saratoga had the block party. Yeah. Wow. The metro was, yeah. That was like one of the main hubs. Well, it's always been interesting because, as you pointed out, we have the police station on one side. Caroline Street on the other. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And we're we're, we're smack in the middle. (laughs) No, it's a good location, though. And this is obviously not just a, 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 what do you call it, Um, a... barista bar uh, what do you call those cafe it's not just a cafe it's not just a brewery but you guys also you're a brew pub like you have um you have food downstairs the pizza which is phenomenal what kind of pizza is that by the way so that's detroit style pizza so our executive chef brandon shatko is absolutely amazing and he kills it he actually won best young chef in detroit a few years ago Thankfully, he came to New York. Thankfully, we were able to, to link up with him, and he just brought a whole wealth of expertise and a whole whole level of quality to the kitchen that you know I think is unparalleled around here. I was I will say this: I was lucky enough to do a um, a liquor tasting. I wasn't gonna, uh, see, so I, I wasn't even going to bring that up. It's a only liquor. the best liquor out there. Okay, stop. <laughs> uh, and I was I came down here for the okay. Now that it's out in the open, the Jameson tasting, and the chef had paired. Uh, different foods, and not just the foods that you guys make here, but uh, you know, foods originally for that with the different types of Jameson that came out. Like, they, they were coming out with like the cask mates, the cold brew, and uh, I, I specifically do remember how good the pizza was and the non traditional style pizza, you know, that you get, you know, in New York, everybody kind of expects the same pizza. This was definitely a very unique spin on pizza, and a couple other items definitely stood out that were unique and very good. So, if anybody wants to try something new, at a brew pub, I definitely recommend the pizza. Yeah, okay, I'm just w- throwing that in there. I'm sorry I, not to do a huge plug for you, but I've actually been here and it was it was it was pretty awesome. I think that I've also had the pizza. I had the wings. The wings were phenomenal. I think I had Korean barbecue wings here that were just delicious. Um, and if the best way for me to describe the pizza, I would say it's a deep dish Sicilian style pizza. Yes, meaning it's definitely square did, and it's yes. deep dish. Yep. So the way delicious. it was actually described to me from Brandon was that it was kind of born out of that Chicago deep dish style, yeah. but supposedly the story goes that it, the first one was actually made in an old um, like tire sheet from one oh, of wow. the auto plants. Yeah. So that's kind of where like the square and yeah, all of that it kind of came from, so rather than the cast iron you'd see in Chicago. Yeah. I wonder how, uh, how, that, how how much flavor that tire paint. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm like, wow. The, I don't know if yeah. I'd risk the tire sheet <laughs> my pizza. Yeah, I, I I couldn't even tell you what year that was, but we better assure everybody out there that we're not you're not doing that anymore. No, either. yeah, no, 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 no tire sheet yeah, pizzas. Didn't didn't even do it to start. All right, um, but and it's also nice. He does uh, these amazing specials weekly. Um, and this Friday, actually, for to celebrate the start of what would have been Oktoberfest, beyond dropping our Oktoberfest, our Mars and Beer, Brandon is actually coming out with a Oktoberfest theme menu for a limited time. That's we're very now, excited maybe we'll, about. Maybe we'll use that as to move into our first beer. Oh, for sure. But well, do you want to go right into? It? I I kind of want to ask him some uh, historical That's okay. questions. I'm I am totally totally cool with that. But, but after that huge plug, I do expect a free pizza. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> Oh, kitchen's opening at four. <laughs> See, we get, this is where we got to take that collaboration that we've talked about with uh, between bars and, and restaurants, and and you start selling some of their pizza at your place. Yeah, it's a little bit of a travel. <laughs> I mean, the pizza might not be fresh by the time you get down to Schenectady from up here. Um, 
So I guess the question I, I was going to kind of jump into is uh, with a lot of our brewers, we ask them where they get their start. Um, I know that you have worked for other breweries in, in, in the past. Anything that uh, that uh, we might know? Um, so it was primarily down in Connecticut, uh, Thomas Hooker and Beck East Brewing, both out of Bloomfield, just outside Hartford. Yeah. My very first, oh, geez, my first two breweries actually don't even exist anymore. <laughs> Um, that might not be a good sign. No. No, but <laughs> thankfully I wasn't back in the house of either of them. Yeah. So um, I that kind of was a uh, college intern, quote unquote. Um, you know, the free, the free labor, but you know, you know, leave a, leave at the end of the week with a case of beer. Can't you complain. Know. Yeah, all your classmates love you, yeah. um, and that's really kind of where you know I fell in love with it. I was you know knee deep in snow and like a half open barn that barn was also half cold room that they were driving forklifts in and out so i'm getting snowed on (laughs) i got refrigerator blasting on me and they're just like go stand there for 10 hours and by hand assemble six pack hold like cardboard six pack holders hands were numb blue shaking and it was just one of those things where i kind of caught myself with just a huge smile on my face and i was just like this is this makes sense to me this is happy and i'm like if i'm happy doing this then not doing grunt work and working my way up is going to be even better yeah so yeah, just kind of ran with it right at there. the bottom no yeah. question about that <laughs> hey, you got to pay your dues yeah yeah yep. true uh, what about you megan uh, where, where did you come from before so this is my fourth brewery i've worked at i started out six years ago at old saratoga brewery which is no longer Um, open but um, after that closed I did some consulting for the Kragers when they were looking to open up the brewery in this space and I did that until I took a job at Lawson's Finest Liquids in Vermont awesome so I moved up there helped them yep exactly helped them open their uh, new tap room and then I wanted to come back to Saratoga so took a job at Northway Brewing Uh, the head brewer there was the head brewer at Saratoga so connected with him and um started working there and then started working here yeah awesome I mean, switched jobs in the middle of the pandemic <laughs> it was too good easy. of an opportunity yeah. to pass up this place is really great it is it's yeah. beautiful too yes I mean, the artwork in here yeah yeah without a doubt it's it's it, there is the building's been here forever yeah there's no describing the the interior of like i said the artwork downstairs is very music oriented up here it's a, there's still music um but there's there's other things going on up here too so a lot of skateboards being a f- I guess former skateboarder myself, I like it. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, w- uh, we, uh, let's we were talking about beers. He said Marzen. What does Marzen mean? I believe it's uh, German for March. Very good. Yeah, the the the, the spring harvest. I'm ready for the test. All right. <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, I don't know. And, and I'll, I guess we can remind people. Like I said, I always assumed that Oktoberfest beers were made with like stuff that came at the end of the season. Therefore, you put it all in and mm-hmm. say, here's my Oktoberfest beer. I obviously don't realize that they started Oktoberfest beers in March. Yeah, so again, with um, part of why going back with lagering takes so long is just the amount of time things happen at these cold temperatures, just that yeast is sluggish, and it just takes a little while. So what they would do is they would, again, obviously, Oktoberfest brew it in March, and then they would actually put it in caves to keep it cold without getting too hot and the beer spoiling. And then once, you know, the kind of the heat of summer broke, yep. they'd go in and get out. So they were essentially, you know, in, with that window they had brewing their beer for the year and hoping that was going to be enough to get through. I'm also just historically impressed with whatever kind of honor system they had going because what the heck is going to stop you from just going into one of these caves and just having a good time? Oh, yeah. They probably did that. They probably put bears they in probably, the cave. Probably, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. I don't know. His, yeah, historically, the Germans... <laughs> yeah, no, it's way too late. <laughs> <laughs> they always had good stuff. Yeah. So right, exactly. Yeah. More, more appropriate. <laughs> my, one of my favorite styles is actually is another German style, uh, Eisbach. And that's another you know, Bach, German origin, where the rumor of that is they were taking one of these barrels that was supposed to you know go to the caves all of that and there was a lazy or distracted assistant who left the left one of the barrels out overnight before it got to the caves like 
you know, morning frost, whatever, the barrel froze. Oh, wow. The punishment that the brewer for, you know, wasting all his, you know, hard work was the assistant that had to, had drink, to, it. Had to drink it. Or eat it. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, it's Ice. one of the first, like, yeah, slushies yeah. kind of, kind of oh, beers. Nice. But essentially, like, it was meant as a punishment. He came back, like, ten minutes later. The assistant's already supposedly hammered. Yeah. Um, and just having a grand old time. Because essentially all, all that happens with that style is alcohol and water have two different freezing points. So the water froze. The alcohol stayed. Alcohol stayed and just it concentrated the booze. It concentrated the flavor. Um, but, yeah. Germans. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a question. Now this, uh, this, well, now I've had Oktoberfest beers. Well, we'll try one in a little bit. How, what is a Bach beer? Bach, uh, well, it's, it's, it's one of, of those. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. Um, so there's, it's actually kind of a group of beers. Okay. Um, Bach double Bach. Well, I'd heard Bach, I'd yeah. heard the story like you know the like the urban legend that like the Bach beer is like whatever's left over after making like you no. know. Some sort of beer, and they yeah. just you know they're like ah it's leftover let's put it in a, yeah. put it in cans. Obviously, it's not what it is. No, so no, no I I I, ha- I haven't heard that. Uh, um, maybe I made I, it up in my dreams. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good story. Um, what that might be is you see that more with Belgians, so with uh, the monks in particular. So what like the they, Trappist? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what they would do um, is would. They would brew the you know the quads, the doubles, the triples. Um, what they would do is they would have a beer that generally wasn't available to the public called an Einkel. Oh yeah, um, and that was essentially tr- loosely translated to a single. So once they take all that grain that they're using for these big double triples quads, they then essentially almost in, like do an additional sparge or just you know rinse with water again. There's still some slight residual sugar, but now they they have this really really low ABV beer that that's what they would drink. So that's that might be it. Where okay, they I, kind I don't of, know. Like you know, the only Bach know. beer I've ever really had was like some something in college. Like won't even mention, but Genesee still makes it, and uh, it's like a darker. It looks darker, but has a very mild, like much a lighter beer flavor than it looks. And I just wondered, you know, we're learning about different styles of beer. I mean. I'm trying to learn. Yeah. But, and, uh, and I always wondered about, I always liked Bach beers because it was, it would look darker, had maybe a darker flavor, but it was milder. It was, wasn't as heavy. Yeah. So really with those, and again, you can have pale box as well. Um, they are definitely known as, you know, darker, um, I think those and the the Dunkel are kind of like the two Similar. big kind of fall, wintry, dark, really easy drinking. Um, the lightness really just kind of comes from the amount of you know grain, you know the yeast. It's a really light, soft profile. Um, the color, like the the dark color, comes from just you know the use the of darker malt. malts, yeah. which you know once you kind of use to get that desired dark color you want. You don't really have to go overboard the way, you know, you kind of think back to some of these old school stouts where, you know, you're just getting beaten over the head so with roasted roast, barley, yeah, chocolate yeah. malts, you know, what, whatever. Um, so in this case, you're getting a lot of the color, but not a lot of that roasted flavor. flavor. Yeah. Awesome. I was wondering, I like, you know, been a fan of Bach beers. Yeah. I, I want to say I see them in fall, but also in spring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, th- technically, again, just as we were talking about Mars and being... Yeah, Maybach is one of those Bach beers. It's brewed, it's brewed in May, but you know that's that's light to amber, and also a beautiful car. <laughs> a what? Maybach. Mercedes Maybach. No. Oh well, yeah, is that, is that like some sort of? Well, it used sport? to be its own. Then Mercedes brought it out. And I thought I was a car guy too. I really dropped the ball on that. Yeah. One. Speaking of which, this this podcast almost didn't happen today. We drove by uh, Spec. And must be the Saratoga Museum is doing an auction or a car show over there. There's I, a lot of cars out there. I literally have, you know, I, I've never felt like this close to somebody jumping out of my car before. Like, <laughs> we were just driving, and I thought, like, he, like he was reaching for the handle. I'm like, well, oh, you got to go. Oh, I appreciate, you know, you making the sacrifice here. <laughs> and then on top of it, we're running late because we hit, like, road work and all kinds of stuff. Well, that's always how it works. That's because you were with me. I'm just perpetually late. Yeah. That's just the way it works. Um, okay, but yeah. now that we got Bach out of the way, 
do you want to go to act to one? Do you want to? So normally we do the the, the three. Yeah. So the third, the first one we tend to go with first is the the more most, your popular most, most popular beer. Yeah. What, what's what's your beer that you you you, you sell the most of? That's tough. Um, honestly, you know we do. I think we're. I'd like to think we do anyway. A, pr- a pretty good job of kind of rotating um, in new beers. Um, I would say kind of in our top two spot would be our now Forger series. Unfortunately, that's very early uh, mm. in the tank, but that's our fruited kettle sour. Okay. Um, beyond that, I would say our uh, In Suspension, a New England IPA done with uh, Citra and Vic Secret. Yeah, very, so, very so cloudy. We got, we got there, Meg yeah. drinking one already, yep. getting ahead of us. I accidentally poured this one, so. Accidentally. Yeah, accidentally. Yeah. Yeah. Accidentally. Yeah. accidentally filled it all the way up. Oh, so look at this it. timing. Actually, we might be going with the newest first. Well, mm-hmm. this is the October. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> is that what this is, October? I'm guessing. That's what it looks now like. Now you said this is this is coming right off the. Yeah, this is this is right off the bright tank. We don't even finish. Pa- we don't or don't even start packaging this till uh, tomorrow. So we get a little uh, a little preview. Now little has previews. this this hasn't been uh, See, that's that exclusive content. Yeah, yeah. that's well that's we're, that's what we do. We break we break news, beer news all the time. <laughs> Our glasses. We'll break <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to I was about to say. Oh, so since this is coming off the tank ha- and I don't know if you do some breweries. Well, I I would say almost all breweries do. Uh, they they carbonate the the beer a little that bit. That was going to be my question too. Yeah, is has this been carbonated yet or is this yeah. yeah, so so it has it has been carbonated. It just hasn't made its way into cans or cans. So it, yet. the last steps have been done. It's just basically waiting to go oh. right into the can. Yeah, exactly. I will say it does look a little. Uh, it definitely has a, a hazy color. I was going to say it's got a little, it's a little more hazy yep. than you would see with some of uh, your Oktoberfest or Marzen beers. Yeah, so all of our all of our beers are unfiltered, um, and that's just kind of more a stylistic cho- choice we make. Um, in the process of going through kind of something where there you have like a centrifuge, you're just adding sort of finings, um, along with kind of gaining that clarity, you also end up stripping out flavor. Um, and it's, you know, especially with the rise of New England IPAs and how everyone kind of likes hazy, um, we're less concerned about, you know, how it looks and more concerned about how it tastes. Mm. It has a very sharp taste. It does. Right? It's kind of like a floral. It's not coriander in this, is it? No, 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 no. So that's so that would be um, some of we use you know, German hops that mm-hmm. are actually um, grown uh, just over the border in Vermont. Oh, nice. Um, with some of our friends at Champlain Valley Hops. Um, but because so part of the reason we're not packaging it today is mm-hmm. we like to give it a little day to let that sharpness die down. Yeah. Um, right when it kind of get that CO two just kind of makes everything explode. It kind of mixes everything around. So we once we carve it, we kind of give it a day to just settle get back in line yeah. and, and then we package All right. you know i will say my first sip made me think of a fall day yes. like halloween yeah like it has that you know when you know you get a nice dry crisp fall day yep that first sip made me immediately think of that i'm not gonna lie the oak hell has kind of made me think of fall too for a split like it's got like an like an apple taste to it um like a cider like uh it doesn't taste like it just it's got that feel yeah. yeah, no, well, when you're working with, um, you know, light beers, that's some of the characteristics of that wood yeah. that are really kind of com- coming that's through right. on the on the back end. There's, um, with lo- lagers in general, especially when you're talking light ones, mm-hmm. for, for us brewers, that's that's kind of the real test. Yeah. You know, if, you know, like we discussed before, if I'm going to any brewery where I don't know the brewer, I don't know their reputation, and if they have a lager on... Mm-hmm automatically the go to that's going to tell me more than any kind of conversation with them any tour at the back um you you have no room to hide with loggers yeah so it's what what makes what makes well, essentially what makes i mean obviously you start them in march whatever uh an oktoberfest like it's an, obviously it's a lager what makes it different than just a traditional lager um so we mixed it up, up again um we used uh Marzen, um, kind of these Oktoberfest styles, have really a handful of yeast strains that are kind of quote unquote traditional. Um, we've used some, I guess, non traditional log- lager yeast strains. Um, and then on this, uh, the grain bill, um, we actually used um, 
Vienna malt mm. in in there as well. So kind of it's a little bit Marzen, a little bit Vienna lager, awesome. um, and then kind of married them together and just kind of made sure the Marzen kind of won out. Yeah. So if you know, we kind of take that approach with all of our beers, where if we're doing something by you know BJCP guidelines or just you know especially with something you know old like an old world style if we're doing it the same way it's been done for you know hundreds and hundreds of years what makes us special why why come here if mm-hmm. it's the same beer being made everywhere so True. we always want to kind of make sure we're putting our own twist on it with something also as iconic as Oktoberfest, yeah. also staying, trying to stay true to those roots. You know, it's funny is um, you kind of get these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, naturalists, originalists, whatever, but when it comes to like beer, like, uh, well, real Oktoberfest is, is made in Germany, and well, you're kind of pigeonholed to what ingredients and, and stuff you can do as styles. You know, there's, there's only so much you can do for German breweries that are using the, you know, to fit in that category when you're in the u.s and you can make a you know october st- uh, fest or a fest style beer you have a little bit more play to you know uh have fun with it no abs- absolutely and that's you know kind of having having that room to navigate is something that's very very important to us and yeah. definitely kind of colors our our approach to all of our beers really yeah that's cool what do you think man it's delicious right i love Oktoberfest. Hmm. it's really good we brewed this one back in June, so it's good to finally enjoy it. Nice. Yeah. And this is your first sip that you've had? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you qu- quality <laughs> control. You, you got to, you know, take those sips every now and again, make, make sure, sure it's, it's all good. on schedule. You saw her make that mistake with that other beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It happens. Yeah. And that's kind of, again, for us, one of the nice things about our, uh, our setup downstairs is that we have the tank space to take on projects like this yeah. and, and logger it the way you know they would over in Europe as opposed to trying to rush it out when you kind of think about what the turnover is on that tank you know one beer in three months versus you know how many you could put out if you're trying to turn over that tank every week every other week um, you know that's tough the, the quality goes down and I think you know that's a testament to us as a team and also uh you know the Krager family and ownership that you know the the quality product is by far and away the most the most important thing that it's not something that we're just being forced to rush stuff if it's going to be that much better if we just let it go then we let it go the tanks and the beer they tell us when they're done not the other way around yeah you know it's funny too is uh, it's kind of cool with uh, i've noticed with i'm sure it's most you know microbreweries or craft breweries that um Everyone does kind of put their own little signature on it um, from different types of ingredients. So, like, uh, what was Grape Flats? Um, I think they use a lot of uh, Barbarian. Uh, oh, yeast. that's good, yeah. At least yeah. you haven't. Or yes. <laughs> you know, it, unfortunately, my memory isn't good enough to file it all away. Like yeah. some, you know, sometimes I'll think, I'm like, oh, yeah, we had this beer over there. I'm like, it was definitely that beer. And then you'll tell me, no, we had that at another brewery. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, great. Good job. <laughs> you know, I'm forgetting who's beer, making what beers. Well, that just means they're all good. Yes. Well, you can. I, I'm starting to feel like you know, with a couple more uh, podcasts, we'll be able to. Uh, like, well, I know that uh, what's name wants us to do it, do blindfold tests, and be able to tell by the different styles of beer. Oh, there you go, a little yeah. Pepsi challenge. Yeah. But well, I, we were going to do that. We were going to do that with uh, uh, with the light beers. Yeah, we're we're going to do it with mass produced. We were going to do it with like Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light. Yeah. That's still pretty hard as a, as a first one. You know. I think. Well, I think he'll nail it. I think he's got it. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, no. you know, that's what it was. Harry that said it. Yeah. I don't think. I don't know if we, if we got it on the recording. I'm you know, but for said sure. how impressive it is. You know, he's giving credit to the bigger breweries like Budweiser and you know Anheuser Busch and Coors and Miller that are able to put out a consistent product all over the world. And when you open up that can or bottle or keg, it tastes exactly the same. Because he says that's one of the hardest things. Because there's so many factors involved in making a beer that from one batch to another, one small little yeah, one small change changes that oh, whole batch. Whole flavor, yeah. And he said he was really impressed with the fact, like you know, he obviously he was you know being kind. Obviously, yeah. he was he probably feels that you know he looks down upon them. But I mean, maybe not. I mean, but he was giving them their due yeah. credit in terms of the difficulty of 
yeah. making cons- that beer consistently for sure. always. But I will say, after going to Frog Alley and seeing all the toys that they got, well, they have a machine that's if you've beer. got that kind of um, technology, yeah. it's hard not yeah, to. Yeah, to, you, you got to be pretty consistent. We have the technology. But we can build here's, it. Here's the deal. They have all that technology, but at the same time, I'm sure that there's a certain amount of variance that they will allow for change, um, taste in their beer. But you can't. But throw they're out, eliminating yeah. as much as they can. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, know, they, with you their, can't with throw out process. eighty barrels of beer because you're off. You know, so you. you I would imagine that you're. They're testing I know where they can get rid of them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, even taking it a step beyond that, you got to think too. Um, ing- ingredients. Yeah. So when you're when yeah. you're kind of one of like the big guys and you're going through. You know, I'm making up numbers here. You know, millions Dude, of pounds right. of grain like, yeah. a week, a month, what have you. You know, you get to go to you know your suppliers, and you know you get your your pick of the litter. Oh, yeah. You get to go out and you know pick the exact acreage, the exact plants for all your hops, all of that. When you're kind of small and craft, it's you know we can contract out and do whatever. But for the most part, you know, that's kind of smaller craft places. We don't really have that weight to throw around, so it is difficult, um, and it's such a pet peeve of mine where. You know, on something like an IPA where it's like I hit all my numbers, everything's exact, my water chemistry is, you know, right to the parts per billion, and now I'm opening, like, a new bag for my same hop supplier, and just, you know, it has all the same oil content, acid content, and then just, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it was just from a different part of the yard where it grew, mm-hmm. the flavors are just a little different. Yeah. Not not bad, no problem, it's not, but now the batch is different and do you run into um like situations let's say like uh all right well i want to i want to brew a couple of beers that use galaxy hops but um you go to your supplier and say oh you know what we're really short it's going to be pretty expensive but we got a good deal right now on continental hops and do you kind of like switch do you have to like switch up like what kind of beers you plan on brewing um depending on what you can get or do you just go ahead and pay the extra couple bucks and and, and, and stay on your plan um i mean it really goes at kind of a situate based on the situation really um for us again that you know we're i mean i still really use the term work we're, we're a couple months old yeah um you know we opened what two months before mm-hmm. you know the, the covid shut down yeah. so um you know we're st- you know we're still kind of figuring it out and we're figuring out what you know customers like and we're figuring like stylistically flavors um, so we're not really pigeonholed into, you know, hey, we, you know, we have to make, you know, Bud Light and, you know, X amount and it's all got to go out the door. If it's, you know, if, you know, it's a, you know, a supplier came to me and said, you know, hey, I got a deal on, on Galaxy and it's really good. I'm not going to sit there and be like, you know what, I'm good. Yeah. You know what, I, you know, I have this other beer, this other hop. I'll be like. If it's high quality, you know, we can adjust the schedule, yeah. find stuff, and we'll, we'll make it work. It's the quality of the product and kind of what we think people are going to like and respond to that really kind of drive everything we do. If, you know, you, it's one of those things where if you put good in, you're more likely to get good out. You yeah. can't start with bad ingredients and then magically turn that into a good beer. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say, though, that I've noticed... Um, you know, like I said, we recently last week, our last podcast with was with the Frog Alley, and for the podcast that we've done, they've obviously have the output to be able to produce so many different beers. Where smaller craft breweries uh, just don't. They'll have you know a handful, maybe eight, ten, um, and it seems like you guys are what like fifteen. Um, I think to date we've dropped something in like the mid to high thirties in terms of new beers which wow. again two months in like before a covid shutdown yeah, um, yeah that were what like eight nine months old at this point kind of in that ballpark um that we've been able to produce that many news across a range of you know styles and that's but i meant like a more like at one time um how many taps you have going at one time at the uh, downstairs you guys uh, we try to keep it on that we try to keep it between you know uh 10 and 12. Okay, yeah. Um, That's still, it's still pretty high. I mean, uh, if, you know, I think last week um, Rich was telling us that single cut is probably the biggest they can have. They can produce uh, a different 
a, ma- a larger number of variety of beers. And then they also, they're like second. And I was like, well, I was really impressed with how many beers on tap at one time that uh, Whitman was having. Yeah, so, and that was, again, just kind of something that was important to us in terms of, you know, brewery layout. We want to have, a, you know, if we're going to get try to get people to come here, visit, sit down, stay, drink, obviously <laughs> try some of Brandon's amazing food. Yeah. Um, you know, we want to make sure we have something for everyone. Exactly. That's my point, is that there's very few uh, breweries out there. Um, well, I mean, everybody tries to have something for everyone, but you, like... Uh, what was your uh, your the dad beer, um, the beer that the everyday beer, the one that you know the Coors Light, uh, D- D- Dick Murphy Light, Dick yeah. Murphy Light, Great so, name, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. With it, with uh, so we, not everybody's into, you know, not even everybody's into something new. Some people want to just go to a bar and they want a light beer, yeah, or, you know, lighter beer, not necessarily a light beer, but I mean, we look light. at it as you know. For the most part, people are going out in groups. Not yeah. everyone is going to be, you know, Stout people, into craft. Yeah, yeah. IPA, so it, you know, yeah. for those people who you know are you know historically are you know cores or bud drinkers, that we have something you know for them too. And if they like it, great. You know, then we'll kind of work them down the road with like an Oktoberfest or this t- or the time is money, yeah. and then we'll see if we can't you know convert them. But if not. That, that Dick Murphy is right there for them. They have that, so they can still come and have a good time with everyone else. You know, and, I, and that th- that type of beer, I mean, it kind of goes with every food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're out and, you know, you want whatever you order for food, it's really not going to contrast with no. anything. You know, if you're, if, you know, like I said, if you're hanging out with a group of people, yeah. they're ordering a bunch of different foods, you know that beer is not going to really go go badly with anything you're eating. Thank you. You're welcome. No, I agree, 100. Um, percent That's why I kind of call it a dad beer. I'm sorry if I was bashing it. No, no, not not, not at all. Um, you know, we you know we go out of our way to try to not be snobby generation. about it. Yeah. Um, but again, to kind of go back and answer your question, um, we have nine nine fermenters. Yeah. Um, so that allows us to constantly have beers going that are ready to come up. Um, we're ten barrel uh, brew house, uh, ten barrel fermenters. Yeah. So it's not you know so big where you know we're brewing you know and then just stuck kind of sitting and waiting and waiting yeah. for stuff to turn over. It's you know obviously again having done thirty plus beers in about you know six months counting COVID, you know that we're turning over at a, a, at, a, at, a, at a at a decent clip. Yeah. Um, but it's not too low, and with those nine fermenters again we can kind of do these you know loggers you know the kind of traditional european way set them aside forget about them for months at a time and still keep those 10 beers going because we have the tank space for it yeah yeah it's actually it's i'm starting to realize that there's obviously a lot that goes into a brewery that a lot of people don't realize and part of it is strategy you know what what ingredients can you get um how many taps you have one of the and it's something i started really thinking about last week when when frog alley was talking about having so many different taps that the bartenders couldn't keep up with what they were you know it's like i don't know like you start confusing yeah not only the bartenders but your customers, your customers you know, too yeah you know it's almost too many choices yeah exactly so they actually scaled it down yep and i think you you guys are like you got a really good mix it's a, it's a perfect mix yeah we always want to keep it balanced and we really don't ever want to get out past 12 at a certain point you just start kind of splitting sales and splitting you know your customers focus yeah um and like you said people can get overwhelmed it's it gets bounced back and forth i would rather be able to turn over and do new batches new beers of 10 to 12 than to come out with like 20 all at once that are now going to sit there for twice as long you know we want to always have something new coming out of the kitchen or out of the brewery that you know entices people to kind of come back and visit frequently is a kitchen a uh an advantage to a brewery to be able to have a kitchen here at the I would say so. Um, really, with that, it's... Um, with as Brent, far as brewing? As far as brewing, it's fantastic. Um, you know, again, not to just kind of do everything the way it's always been done. So having, you know, Brandon and, like, our amazing team in the kitchen as a resource of introducing us to, you know, various, te- you know, techniques, spices, different ingredients that, you know, we try to, you know, incorporate into into beers is, you know, fantastic. And I definitely think kind of gives us a definite edge on the, on the brewing side. Mm. And have you ever done 
um, I don't know, something that Dave and I have talked about before that uh, we had a podcast where we did uh, barbecue and we repaired beers with it the wasn't just of barbecue food. it was no, like, yeah, you know, food right. and beer. it was like a backyard barbecue so, yeah. but, but there was I mean obviously Kevin doesn't do anything you know half no he, half he, 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 he ass bruschetta ass. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. whole ass that yeah shrimp scampi like you know it's like it's a backyard barbecue we're all I made a meatloaf like come on <laughs> this guy's over here making gourmet food but um, we did a, a pairing uh, with the different types of beers and foods and, and stuff um, and it was it was a lot of fun and I think it was it was a, it was a different way to experience food and beer I mean do you guys ever think about having um, having that synergy between your kitchen and your Oh, ab- absolutely. Um, so obviously, with everything kind of going on in the world right now, it's been put on the back burner. But we will sure. do we will do uh, as things hopefully get back to normal in the near future. Um, you know, beer dinners, beer pairings. Yes. Um, even right now on our regular menu, the kitchen will actually work and prep food, including like our pizza dough is actually made with with beer that that will you know recycle some of our spent grain that goes to local farmers but some of that also stays in house and gets refined into into like flour and you know kind of it turns into some of our baked goods awesome do you ever like uh like going to your next door neighbor where you ask for a cup of sugar you're just like hey i need a cup of yeast uh they actually come to <laughs> us us for yeast i usually kind of go in the back and um i was just like hey like vanilla beans <laughs> uh you know we were, we were doing this stout um and that's honestly, I think that's been my favorite thing is he has an access to a whole other line of vendors yeah. um, that I do. And he just threw like 10 pods of like Madagascar vanilla beans that for me would have been like 300 bucks worth wow. for him is like 40 and was just no, like no thought. No, just like, yeah, here, here you go. go. I'll get more tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm just standing there like You're beating the system. Yeah. I was like, this <laughs> is, yeah, this is great. amazing. Did an end run. <laughs> That's some vanilla beans. That's awesome. Now, would you put the vanilla like in a stout? Yeah, yeah. So that's like so that's that? yeah. yeah. So that was uh, part of our uh, our written in the dark uh, stout that we did with uh, vanilla beans and uh, pretty much uh, like raw cocoa nibs. Nice, awesome. Well, we got off track there. We did in we terms did. of um, the beers we were doing. Yeah. Do you want to try to uh, get another beer? Yeah, get another beer, or at least, well, yeah, probably get another beer. Yeah. Uh, New? No, we're doing new. We, um, we, we did new. What about? Um, yeah, it's, I think. In what about? Uh, yeah, the, the IPA. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So we're going to pause briefly while I pour oh. this person who is being rude and sticking <laughs> their glass in my face. We're pausing. Keegan, briefly how dare you? To get yeah, to get some uh, to get some more beer. Quality control. <laughs> this beer just is, is accidentally falling in my mouth. Yeah. Maybe we can accidentally stop at SPAC on the way back. We can. I don't have a convertible, though. I I don't have a GTO. I want to say that usually the the auctions, like on the weekend, I'm surprised there would be cars there today. Yeah, I know. Maybe they're prepping. Well, I think the auction actually starts tomorrow and goes through Saturday. Oh. So, yeah, they're probably getting it ready. They probably won't even let us in there. I read that. You wouldn't uh, be embarrassed going in there in a a Nissan Sentra Nismo? No, I wouldn't be embarrassed at all. But but I'm pretty sure the rule was... If you're not selling a vehicle or buying a vehicle, you don't belong. You here. can't be in there. Uh-huh. See if you can do a swap. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put a price tag on my car. I'll sell your car. Fifty thousand ah, dollars. That's a little more than I think it's worth. That's it, that's it's that's worth more want. than that to me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that's, got, those got, are big pores. You got plenty of roads back there. You can race for pink slips. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'll thank lose. You. Wow. It's, I think this must be a, like just a thing. Like when she hits a tap. It, the cup gets full no yeah. matter what. It's like it's like at McDonald's where they yep. you yeah. pick the size. <laughs> so yeah, right. You just hit the button. Boom, full glass. All right. What do we? Okay. Now we're now we're back. Yes. And we're we the, we have the uh, something. What, okay, I'm not even gonna screw it up. Go ahead. Tell us what this is. What are uh, we about to drink? All right. So this one is our uh, in suspension New England IPA uh, made with uh, Vic Secret hops out of Australia and Citra. American kind of a classic, uh, a very Vic popular secret hop now. Hops? Vic Secret. So Fun is that fact, like the was, guy version of Victoria's Secret? It was actually called. Oh, I, Victor- I never even got that. That's wow. It was actually really called slow. originally Victoria's Secret because it's ah. it's grown in Victoria, Australia, oh, yeah. 
and then they got sued. Yep, just and like Walt Whitman. And now yeah, it's yep. <laughs> and now it's and now it's Vic. It's amazing, secret. you guys are just stealing names left and right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't. If I had this hop to myself, I would absolutely not share it. So it's, it's, I don't think I've, I've tried a beer with that. It smells very. It's probably fruity. stolen. They probably snuck it out. Like it smells. Uh, smuggle, smuggled, 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 smuggled some plants out of some suitcases. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah. It's I bet, fruity, you, I bet you some hops are worth more than some drugs. Oh, I believe it. Well, per, apparently per, some per, vanilla uh, bean is. Per, right. I mean, we better start investing <laughs> in vanilla, <laughs> vanilla bean. Mmm, it's delicious. Wow. That this, is also our, this is also our... Uh, our first beer that we were able to get in cans uh, now that we got our canning line up and running finally um, and we were fortunate enough to work with a, uh, a local Saratoga artist who did a fantastic job on our artwork obviously awesome. from looking around uh, up here in the cafe and downstairs as well artwork was very important yes wow I think Pete, Eric and Gaz would love this one yeah this one's solid like there's a lot going on there so I don't know if you guys get the opportunity to make it out to uh, Schenectady all that often, but Probably Dave never. owns a bar called 20 North Broadway, and his partner, Eric, uh, is a big, big fan of uh, IPAs, and uh, I think you're right. His brother, Pete. And yeah, Pete, too. Yeah. Pete, Gaz, and Eric are hey, they're IPA guys. I mean, might have to leave with some. Yeah, <laughs> not, the, not the worst thing. I know I am. But, yeah, this is, this is like... Um, Right up there, right up like that. Like I'm thinking, like the alchemist type. Yes, you know uh, the I heady top or the, the heady. I will welcome that comparison all day. <laughs> so yeah, you know, really thank, thank yeah. you. I mean, <laughs> I think that um, I think between the the two places that I've been to so far I, locally, that I'm a big fan of their uh, IPAs, their New England style IPAs, has been Fiden's in here. Like these, they're so far. Um, the IPs that I, the IPAs that I've had from these two places have been really good. Oh, you know, always appreciated. So there's, th- yeah, thank you. Of, there's yeah. a lot of um, there's a lot there's a lot of I mean, good there's, places. There's a lot around of spiciness here. in that as well. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's oh, like, no. like like there's a lot of like I'm not sure where the spiciness comes from. I'm assuming, assuming it's probably the hops. The hops, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So we actually so one of the things we do that's actually and it's crazy that They're I'm even going to gonna say car. this. But almost yeah, like a right. spiciness, like a heat. Like a... Yeah, so what... So, with this, this, it's, you know, we're in, you know, the kind of low to mid sevens alcohol-wise. Um, but, so, it's crazy that I'm going to say this, but we actually will do a, uh, like a slight bittering addition for kind of our IBUs for that hot bitterness. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that I have to say that, because with this style, that's very much not commonplace anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be, you know, kind of, you know, the West Coast, that was pretty much all you were doing. Yeah, a lot of pine. And then, of... you know, that pendulum swung the other way, and now it's the juice, it's the fruit, and almost, yeah. you know. Juice bomb. N- no, yeah. no bitterness. Um, was that slow And we kind of we wanted that little bite. I think so. Yeah, but, I mean, it's a, it's a very distinctive bite, like, in terms of it's almost like, I mean, I would liken it like a, like heat, like a, like a pepper heat, almost. Yeah. Um, so with the, one of the things we also do with this is we have um, biotransformation, um, where essentially um, it's kind of a growing and not completely understood uh, technique, but that doesn't stop any brewery from kind of doing it anyway mm-hmm. at this point, where we'll actually add the dry hops in while that yeast is still active. The dry hops can eat up to, like, between one and three percent of the hops and what it'll actually do is it'll change that oil content so hops that you know that most people are going to be pretty much familiar with that flavor in this process of kind of mixing it with that yeast um, will actually completely change the flavor so that's something that you know we we definitely have kind of played around with this one and have been very very pleased with the results so you know this is one of those that I will definitely say I tend to tinker with recipes. This one... You're not messing with. No. I've, I've been instructed by multiple people. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't want to. So Don't change it. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. I've been... Do you have the opportunity to uh, split the batch at um, you know during the boiling process and be able to you know do like a small batch of something off of this? 
Uh, we could, in theory. Um, that's not something we have done or really plan to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so our brew house and all our tank sizes are all one size. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's so, no, there's no kind of like making multiple batches yeah. to to fill one up. And the flip side is there's no small tank to go into. The issue with that just is kind of you touched upon earlier. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes in terms of kind of like planning and brewing yeah. and brewing setup um, that don't really get factored in. Tank geometry yeah. is actually huge. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's what your listeners want, right? Yeah. Like they want to hear me talk about math. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Keep it up. Yeah. No. Um, so essentially, what happens is if we don't fill it up all the way with, yeah. as you guys have seen, those kind of conical bottoms that forces the yeast to act differently than it otherwise would. So it doesn't if until you hit a certain volume it's yeah. not necessarily the most Gonna, uh, yeah. repeatable process given what with there's what we a have. The, the question came from we did it um uh, we did a podcast with mad jack and uh brian has what he calls the crazy party robot which was a little tank that he got his hands on to and was able to um retrofit it with a fitting so that he can siphon off of his larger tank at some point um in the process and do Before a small batch fermentation. yeah so he has no. He had no choice. Sorry, I'm taking over. No, go ahead. You know more it about was, it than I do. I you know, in his, um, in his, when he did the boiling, he couldn't. He had to make a full batch because of the way the steam sleeve was. You know, you can't make just a small amount in a large container, like you said. It does, the geometry doesn't work, or you know, the physics. And uh, so he would make a full batch of something before. Obviously, this is before you're putting it in the fermentation tank. And he would siphon off like a small, like probably Ten. like yeah, like a like a full keg's worth, you know, and siphon it off. And he could he could play with that one while the rest of it went into its regular fermentation. So, for example, like taking this beer before you, you know, before you put it in, put in the yeast, he would take it off and put a different yeast into it, obviously giving it another flavor. But he could but he could he could only make a full batch. He couldn't like make a small batch. And put in a small tank. He had to commit to a full batch of something that he knows that, that people he, are going to like. Knows people are going to like, and he would take a small part of it and experiment with the small part of it. And if it was good, he would put it right to the tap. If not, if then it was uh, good. He could always turn around next time and, and make a whole it, yeah, batch, yeah. you know, in and that, in that way. What were we, it was a it was a wit, wasn't it? it? Was like a raspberry wit? No, it was a wit, but a grapefruit. It might have been. I mean, you know, we're drinking beer. My memory knows, goes yeah. immediately. <laughs> I don't even remember who you are. Right, I mean, you know, like I said, you, know, <laughs> you do enough of these and you drink enough beer, you're not going, you're never going to get them all right. But yeah, so that's something we could, in in theory, do. Um, I just found myself way too much beer. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of beer in front of me. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all good. Yeah, it's good. I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, if the way you got the way you guys go around and do this stuff, I thought you were going to be able to keep up. Oh, yeah. we do. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> wow, we just Fair. got called out. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Okay. All right, all right. Let's I, get I, feel some like shots Marty, I feel like I feel like Marty McGee. Yeah. Let's get some shots. <laughs> yeah, where's the Jameson? Really start this I know there's a cabinet right. not locked yep. in that room over there. <laughs> you were correct. <laughs> oh boy, I feel like Marty McFly, and I just got called a chicken. Yellow, <laughs> yellow, oh, yellow, or it chicken. chicken? And the in the in the like part two, it was chicken. And then when he goes into okay. the uh, when he goes into uh, Mad Dog Tan and calls yeah, him yellow, yellow, right? Nobody calls me yellow. Though he actually was, he didn't actually fight him. He used a, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, pot belly stove door as it was after, body armor. It was, uh, it was after the, what was it, Fistful of Dollars. It was either Fistful of Dollars or for a few dollars more. That's that. When he got, that was the actual movie that, that that's from. Oh, the dirty, yeah, because he was Clint Eastwood, yes. It was the man with no name. And, uh, you know, he got beat up by, I, don't, I forget who it was, the Rojos or whatever. And, uh, yeah, he used the stove door because of the, there was the whole thing about the, the man with the pistol and the man with the rifle, you know, the man with the pistol is a dead man. It's a whole thing. I know more about 80s movies than I do yeah, 70s it's movies. A, it's a whole thing. And he, he remembered it from the Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, you and know, put it on. He knew that he would shoot right for the middle of his chest, you know, so he put the basically... A Meanwhile, bolt, we're the two proof. old men sitting at this table. But these guys probably don't even know what Back to the Future is. Of course well, they do. I know. I, yeah, no, I was going to say, but I was like, the, the detail on it is so much more than, than I got. You but. lost me after Marty McFly. <laughs> <laughs> McFly, yeah. Well. Oh yeah, we watched that movie a lot. I mean, it's, like you said, I'm a huge Clint Eastwood fan, so oh, I didn't know I've that. Watched, oh yeah, I've watched those movies many, many, many times. Is that your favorite actor? 
After Paul Newman probably passed away, Paul probably. Newman? Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, I would not that it matters, but I think my favorite uh, actor. Um, at least I enjoy his movies and him in them the most, and they tend to be uh, um, Quentin Tarantino movies. But it, not necessarily. I like Tim Roth. I had to fill that because I got to remember his name for a second. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to pick somebody from those movies, you got to go with Christopher Walken. Oh, Christopher Walken! Oh my God, the guy's a genius. I, my favorite movie by him, and it's, you'll probably kill me. Uh, pool, pool. Joe Dirt. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, no. Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. Pool Hall junk- Junkies. Never saw. Oh, that. I love that. I, I haven't seen movie. it either. It's a really Highly good. Highly recommend. It's good. There, especially when he's telling the story about the the cub messing with the lion. <laughs> oh, that that's stereotypical. That's like that's probably the best monologue from from uh, Christopher Walken in any movie. I don't know, man. Yeah, I know there's some good Cold ones, but this one's a good one. Good. Yeah, he's only in the movie like for literally like. But that's a immediately what. That's the first thing I thought but of when you said great, it. Yeah, it's a great. You're not gonna believe this. One of my friends, Catman, one of our uh, generous benefactors, oh, sent yes. me a Pulp Fiction. What is it? Uh, script mm. with everybody's signature on it. Uh, That's insane. That's great. Bruce Willis, Ving Rhames, uh, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Uma Thurman, John Travolta, Sam Jackson, and Christopher Walken. Wow, that's in- you have like j- just and Quentin just Tarantino. that sheet would be insane. It's yeah, the, you got the whole script, the whole the script, and it's all the signatures. Why is it right not in the, the glass case hanging? Like, yeah, I was gonna say, how do you how do you hang and like preserve that without? I don't know. Yeah. I think I lost it already. Actually, I don't even know where it is. Just and on the coffee table with like I hope some, some not stain, listening right like now. some some stains <laughs> yeah, on it. Well, here's yeah, that's right. I, I'm like, check this out. I throw it on the coffee <laughs> table. <laughs> Catman would kill me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I will it, say that it was an awesome gift. I was so blown away. In a past you know. life, I was I, I got to go into the uh, the I think I've, I mentioned this before on the podcast. Um, I got to go into the uh, archives of the Hall of Fame, and they kept rooms with old like uh, uh, programs and stuff, old newspaper in a room that was like I don't know maybe fifty degrees. Like they kept it no no moisture, no humidity, yep. and it was cold. Yep. So you might want to put that in the freezer or something. Well, I'll stick it in my refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll last. <laughs> Buy a humidor for a script. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, an anti-humidor, you have to have it completely dry. Yeah. I don't know, it was a great present. I'm just... Since we're on on the topic of, of, of entertainment, have you seen the new Mandalorian? Uh, no. I've, I've are you seen, a fan? I saw, last, I saw the last... Uh, I saw the first season, but not the last episode. episode. I, I got stuck on it, and unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to watch it. Well, are you a fan of the show? Oh, I think the Mandalorian is excellent. This Absolutely. is the way. Yeah, this is the way. This yeah. is the way. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to watch the. You got to watch the last episode. You got to watch the trailer. So don't blow it for me. I don't. The want trailer. To well, you 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 have the very trailer will give anything away. Oh, then again, I'm, I'm talking to somebody who does does not do social media, so you're fine. Oh yeah, there's no chance of that. Yeah, I was gonna say if you were on social media, I feel bad. Somebody asked me what our podcast was, like how <laughs> they could get on it, like literally like three days ago. I said I had no freaking idea. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just Google it. I mean, literally, I've, I've I've put out videos, and he's not he doesn't do social. He doesn't even listen to the, the podcast. But I'll, I've done videos where I've I've sat just sat there like with like my camera on my uh, on my uh, Alexa. Hey Alexa, play the Capital Brew podcast, and sure, play an episode, whatever. And I'm like, awesome. And I'm like trying to tell him how excited I am. He's like, Alexa, what's that? <laughs> I was like, bro, our Instagram's blowing up. He's like, well, is that good or bad? What's Instagram? <laughs> All right, that makes me feel better. I'm very like off social media and everything so uh like i i definitely feel you on that that's and that's just kind of one of those things where you know for us as a brewery you know when we're kind of in the position that you know meg and i are we don't we don't get to have personal opinions online anymore it becomes anything we say is you know oh well whitman is saying this or whitman is doing that and it's just like nope i'm just gonna back away from that say, my my fiance is careful what she posts yeah based on she's worried about my my business yeah. because what she posts could come back and be backlash on me and like that's how careful people have to be she's like it's her post yeah but she's careful because of what ha- might happen to my business that's how bad some of these things are well, there was the uh soccer player yeah a couple months ago la galaxy you know the the guy's wife had you know posted something and they terminated his contract yeah. and like I don't know 
It's tough. Like I, I, I will let you know. I uh, just because I, I came across a post on social media. And I don't get into politics at all whatsoever on social media or in anywhere. Um, but I seen a post that said um, Joe Rogan uh, offered to uh, to host a debate between Trump and Biden, and somebody posted like, "Ooh, get Joe Jorgensen in there." And I was like, "You know what? That would be uh, that would be uh, just." In fact, they have Joe Rogan. Who is Joe Jorgensen? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Jorgensen is the uh, is the president candidate for the um, Libertarian. So I, I just think it would be cool to like have like a Ross third. Perot this year? Yes, exactly. So it, like you have your Democrats, the Republicans, and just for the fun of it, since it's Joe Rogan, why not throw in a third party? Just let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, what happened? Give me some popcorn. I'll watch it. Did it happen? No. Not yet. I mean, I think that um, Trump said that he would do the the, um, debate against Biden with uh, Joe Rogan. But um, I don't think Biden's answered or I haven't heard anything from it. I'm sure I'm sure with Rogan and his new Spotify deal and all of that, they're going to have something to say, too. So, yeah, true. Apparently, he's a fairly large like he has a fairly large. Oh, he's insane. Um, audience, yes, huge. You know, he's the number one number podcast of all time. He's, he's probably right behind uh, Howard. No, he, well, as far as radio, like he's yeah, in the terms number of, one. You know, know listeners, you yeah, know, type thing. Oh, he mean he may have surpassed Howard. No yeah. way. Well, I find that Maybe. very hard to believe. Yeah, <laughs> as Meg exactly. chimes in, <laughs> as someone who listens to Howard every day, <laughs> I find I also I agree with her. I find it really hard to believe that it, somebody well, has, has he doesn't do it, Howard again. It's apples and oranges, but. Um, Joe's got a massive following. I mean, Howard has Lenny Dykstra on. I mean, that that's <laughs> he is comedic gold, though. Ooh, ooh I understand because I've heard him talk on the show, and I don't even listen to Howard. I've heard him once listening with my partner Eric, and it was hysterical. Oh, it's the guy is gold, comedic sure. gold. Like it, I couldn't believe it. I was so blown away. I looked at him. I'm like. Is this guy for real? It's and shocking. he is. It's the guy's for real. Like I would like to just spend like an hour with him. It would, it would be amazing. Right. I mean, not that it would be awesome, amazing, but it would be amazing somehow. Memorable, memorable, yes. fascinating. Yes. yes, I mean, I mean, he's he is like a, he's like a ship sinking. You can't you can't not listen. <laughs> That's, that's my even, thoughts that's not even with like analogy. Howard. Like when wreck. I was a kid, I like like yeah, it's like a train wreck. Ar- Artie Lang was, you know, I I loved him as a kid, and now it just kind of got like sad. But that yeah, yes, yeah, Lenny Dykstra. I mean, like, <laughs> and was a great player, like 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 an awesome baseball player. But obviously, he's there's something up with that guy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's you know he's not normal, no. <laughs> to say the least, <laughs> from what I've heard. <laughs> Yeah, apparently he's good at more than just baseball. I don't know. He's good. He's, he's amazing. He's now I got to hear this. I haven't heard it, so I got to hear it. You haven't? I mean, I don't. Like I said, I only. I was only listening because Eric listens to it. You know. Yeah. He's like, you got to hear. You got to hear this part with Lenny Dykstra. And yeah. it was. It was. Yeah, just you as listen as, to Howard every day. You can get in here. It was just as amazing. I don't know what the rating is on this podcast. <laughs> no, oh, do we? No, it's it's whatever you want. <laughs> Six, I try seven. Be, I try to be careful, but you can all time. You know, this isn't like. The FCC is not going to come bust it in the door because you said, no. you know, fuck. I mean, it's basic. we're just basically talking to my mom. and My mom my doesn't dad. even like it, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> she won't offend her at all. She won't even listen. So feel free to let her rip. Good to know. You can swear all you want to. We often don't. I try not to. Just, I, don't know. I just, I, I, to. because it's beer, I think it's an adult topic. I always put it as explicit. Just so I can cover yeah, my base. Like worried about my <laughs> niece listening to it or something. No. She would, have, you know, she wouldn't be interested. So no, you can probably exactly. get away with it. <laughs> I almost made a really bad reference joke there. I almost said this doesn't have Britney Spears on it, but then I just realized that's really old. Yeah, you dated yourself on that one. I mean, <laughs> well, no, you, I was like, I'm thinking been. like something that young girls would be into. I'm like thinking, ah, Britney Spears. No, that's probably she's long gone. So people that are listening to that are now going out to bars and actually might listen to our podcast. If we were yeah. good. If we, yeah, if. That's a big if. If we didn't jump the shark in episode one. Ah, Boom! Do you, do you, do you just, like, are you planning on it every episode to get that in there? I am now. Or do you, do you like, you're like, yeah, you know, if it comes up, I'll throw it out there. <laughs> like, I'll, 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 I'll throw that out there. It's amazing that I actually was wondering when you were going to come out with it. Because I was. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna get through one where you don't where you don't say it's impossible. About it. And he brought it up in our. Do you remember that? He did, and I was gonna let it go, but <laughs> you you brought it up. I was waiting for him to say. I was hoping. I was hoping, hoping he was gonna say it. So we have an inside joke, which we joked that we it's joked. Not the inside, shark. it's no, on. It's every actually episode. it's every episode. Yeah, There's a, everybody. Well, starting on episode four. 
three, four. I think we it was on there from the get go. It was on episode one. No, you're right. It was probably we, we had to after we talked to Kevin. Yes, right. Which would have been the fourth. I think episode was with him. Yeah, we might have worked it into the episode before that though. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> What's the other one? Don't we have another inside joke? If I can't think of it, and you can't think of it. It's not a good joke. Nope. Yeah, no, the only one you guys blew me up but, uh, before we were at the, the bar was the Jump the Shark. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how you independently came up with that. I mean, just... We I mean, I consider that like a pretty That's, common phrase. Well, yeah. it was psychic. Yeah, that You're too. a psychic. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the broadcast, but... It's, what, it's, lot definitely, definitely, like. it's definitely common and well, I mean, with, a, with a, like, entertainment. I say it on, if I say it in the mm. mic, so... Oh, and like three bucks. You won three dollars? No, I would because we have such millions of listeners. If he was to give away the uh, the the winning lotto numbers, um, I'd only win three bucks because we're huge. Okay. <laughs> I almost made you do a spit take. You were lucky. I almost got all over. <laughs> I was at a dinner party last night. I made one kid laugh so hard he slammed his head on the wall. And I thought I was like, all right, that, that that was a good compliment. If you did a spit take right there, that would have that would have trumped it. But I didn't. No, it was close. How do you I hit didn't. your head on the wall? Like, <laughs> like you just like like, 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 like So I have a friend. Um, he's a he's a bartender in the in the Orlando area. Um, he's been up here for I don't know a few weeks now, and um, he made his way to Schenectady. I haven't seen him in like fifteen twenty years, and um, so he has an Instagram where. He takes photos of food, and he likes to work out a lot, and um, so he's always taking photos of himself, selfies, and in every single selfie, he doesn't wear a shirt. So Did when he run out of shirts? Maybe it was laundry day. Well, every single day? Well, he posts, you don't know. Like, he could have done them all in one day like, when his laundry was all in the, you know, all in the dryer. Instagram right now. It's Florida. Yeah, it's, well, he's, yeah. And he's... Well said. It's Florida? It's warm out. He likes to take photos of himself without a shirt on. Long Does so, he do the duck face too? <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. You saw the picture. Yeah. I mean, you tell me. You tell me. Well, so we're sitting at the dining room table or dinner table at the restaurant, and they asked the waitress to take a photo. And as soon as she was done taking the photo, I said, "Oh wait, uh, nobody will recognize Jay. His shirt Jay's was on." on. Yep. And one of my friends started laughing so hard he hit his, slammed his head on the wall. Everybody, because nobody That's hysterical. Yeah, nobody said has ever said anything to him about not wearing a shirt. Whatever. So it was funny. And if you Very. did a spit take, it would have trumped it. All right. I'm cutting that story out. I mean, the spit take. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I, I got to follow up. What are, what are the captions like on this? Is it one of those where it's just they're like the caption is completely non like it's related to the, fact, like, <laughs> yeah. to the fact it's like day. it's just like but a duck face, like shirtless cute. Florida man. Yes. <laughs> it's really hot out today. No shirt. Um, and Live, his- laugh, love. <laughs> He, he he's a he's a, a bartender. At, uh, Spilled some wine on my shirt. In Disney, had to take it off. <laughs> so it's I don't know. It's weird. It's just weird. Wait, you say Disney? Yeah, he's Ep- a bartender in the Animal Kingdom. Oh, I was gonna say Epcot Center. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> well, he says he makes he says he makes a good amount of money about being a bartender there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I can see it, it's it's insane. If I was at Disney, I would be at the bar. The yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have kids, so that's where I am anyway. <laughs> well, you got to think too, I'd like. Rides. I What's remember. That? I remember going to Animal Kingdom as a kid, and it was I've just never been. so hot. The animals didn't do anything, yeah. so except sweat and lay down. Yeah, he said there's private like parties sleeping. with the animals. By the way, like Tiger King. Yeah, or wait, ti- you get to go. Tiger King? Yeah, yeah. see, you were up with a. Uh, that depends. Hey, well, depends what you're willing to pay for. Plenty of television. Don't worry about that. I'm just not on you know social media. Oh, but yeah, if the animals are all like asleep because it's like Florida summer and just really hot, then. What else are you going to do? I mean, do? plus it's daytime. You know, most of them probably you know are up yeah. at night. Yeah. So what? So maybe the maybe the zoo should be open at nighttime. Definitely. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to find when the zoo times are on your phone. Yes. Right. I'm trying to find a trying to find a picture of them without a shirt on. That's not that's not hard. <laughs> All. It's, yes. It's phone background. Yeah. That's what he uses for. Yeah, it's wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jay well, he's at the beach. It. Of course, he's got a shirt. Oh, on. I mean, got, that's not a good one. I'll find one of them in the shirt. Of course, he's well, got he, a he shirt. has sunglasses on. That's like that's like Florida formal wear. That's a stereotypical Jay photo, standing in the mirror, making a. Uh, he almost does have a duck face. face yeah. <laughs> I 
think you have to. I'm now, I'm, now I'm afraid I made fun of him. He's going to come over <laughs> and beat me up. No, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a great dude. Uh, I arm wrestled him last night, and I uh, actually you lost terribly. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and How I, do we know that? Because we can see his <laughs> arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so his job literally is split into two, two parts: him at the oh, gym. Shit, I'm look, those. no, go ahead. We, I mean, we, we completely we literally have yeah. a tank of this. So, like, <laughs> go for it. What a comforting feeling <laughs> to know that there's as much as I want down there. We're missing music. What happened? Didn't we have music? No, we said something about it, but they ignored us. Oh. They're like, these guys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so, no, go ahead. Yeah. No, so that sounds right. Yeah, no. It's, I think I just killed the fruit oh. just to be safe on the background. It's, Fine. it's down a flight of stairs. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Like, that's work. <laughs> well, I was going to open up the window, but we're right next to the police station, so. No, no crimes happen next to the police station, so That's don't worry about well, that. Well, no, but they come flying out there with their sirens on to come tow my car. No, they won't. <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, we've gone to two beers now. We, we're down to our last beer, your heart and soul beer. Yeah, what okay, beer? Yes, that's, that's the most important one, the one you're, that is your favorite, that you love. The thing that you put all your heart and soul in, the one that you, you, you write probably home to mom about. Yes. I mean, I put my heart and soul into all these beers. I don't mean... Um, Good answer. Yeah, right. What are you thinking, Meg? This is this can be. This doesn't need to be like a joined favorite beer, like each of us. Oh uh, yeah, if you wanted to, your well, I yeah, think no. we know what your favorite yeah. beer is because it accidentally fell in your glass <laughs> yeah, twice. You accidentally poured it all the way to the top by mistake. <laughs> oh, written in, what are you thinking? Written in the dark and done. Let me see what's on tap up here. Yeah, that's true. Let's let's, oh, let's yeah. see what's available. No, that's not how it works. No. <laughs> what's your favorite? Unfortunately, my favorite isn't on right now. So, uh, that so also, tell us what, what it is, is anyway. Um, so it really, for me, is the uh, our now Forger series of, of beers, which are... The sours. Kind of, yeah, so our uh, kettle, kettle sour fruited kind of kind of get lumped into this kind of like new age uh, Berliner Weiss yep. uh, style. Um, so for us, it's the now Forger is a rotating series of beers that we do um, that... It's a, kind of a similar base beer, and then we rotate through fruit or combinations of fruit, um, depending on the variation that we're doing. Um, so in the past, we've done um, raspberry, and we've actually oh, wow. done uh, boysenberry. Oh, wow. Um, you know, not to interrupt you, Wolf's Hollow just did that. Yeah. Really? Wolf's Hollow just did. I, we just well, it wasn't a sour. That. It was the no, wit. With no, the- boysenberry loud, sour. They just, they literally, I you just. You said Wolf's it, Hollow. I'm sorry. Wolf's Hollow I, just did a Boysenberry Loud. I, I totally interrupted you. I No, and I interrupted him. <laughs> um, but I believe Boysenberry, I know, like, you don't see it very often. Like, it's sort of like a black raspberry, I want to say. Yeah, in that, in that kind of, you know, excuse me, that, that family. little tart, but sweet. Okay, now that I've purple. totally interrupted you. Uh, no, no you're right too much. You know, but we use, so for ours, we use, uh, it's all, you know, real fruit, no that kind of chemical additive, yeah. uh, you know, Fake BS. cherry, sour yeah. apple. Yeah. Which is J- uh, Dave's favorite flavor. What is? Uh, sour apple. Oh, uh, my God. Jolly Ranchers and I, Skittles. I, I, it's Skittles that, that I got the issue with. Jolly Ranchers always made I sour like the sour apple. Skittles, but uh, the bag for me is almost too much. Well, but I like the end on, like, Sour Patch Kids, like that last, yeah. like, 10%. Skittles, I'm like, my tongue is just <laughs> Skittles used to make their, the, the regular Skittles, you know, grape, you know, whatever. The green one used to be lime. They changed it to Sour Apple. Really? Yes, I can't stand it. Clearly I'm not eating enough candy. That's, like, I my mean, big takeaway from today. You know. Well, you said it, and I instantly was – I was I was blown away because I also – lime is my favorite flavor. That and grape is my second flavor. Uh, you know, I love original Skittles, but now I won't get them because, like, I would just scoop a handful, eat them. doesn't matter what flavor, but now when there's sour, ap- sour apple in there – All right, if I'm we're done, talking candy, I'm about to throw myself under the bus here a little bit. Rankings, like, traditional Starburst flavors. Oh, Pink. Starburst. Easy. Number one. I'm. Um, Thank you so much. Probably my favorite is orange. Wow. No, see, I, I I agree. I go orange, yeah. and I find yep. myself just, you know, orange. Like, I, I get grief for it. Yeah. Well, it's weird, Megan. What's your but favorite? But I love all of them. Starburst <laughs> flavor. Oh yeah, there's, you can't go wrong. Uh, strawberry. Yeah. Is which That's color pink. is that? That's red. Pink. That's pink. pink. So it's two, two, two. two. All right, we'll live with that. Or cherry. Cherries, yeah, would be my second. So the red one. I would put Lemon. that as la- I'd put that as last. Yeah, I go, maybe I go orange, yellow, pink, red. Yellow. 
Nobody puts yellow in the top three. I would. Yeah, what, me. Really? Yeah. See, yep. The older orange, I get, yellow. the more I like it. <laughs> See, as, as her palate develops, is that, that's clearly what's going on. I have a palate of a three-year-old. And, and, and I'm not even joking. I'm serious. Like, there's so much food I don't like. I'm like one of the pickiest people ever. I will say um, best uh, class I ever took as part of, you know, you know, beer school, you know, quote, quote unquote. Where'd you go to my, school? Um, so it was uh, the Canadian Food and Wine Institute wow. in uh, Niagara. Two years, but best class, sensory evaluation, which is literally just teaching you how to drink and taste. Friday, two hours. It was essentially like the school was like your pregame. You know? <laughs> I mean, granted, the test where they'd plop a beer down in front of you yeah. and just be like, tell me what style it is, describe it to me. And then the kicker would always be, who made it? Yeah. So when you, you'd get like, you know, a lager, you'd have to be like, oh, it, this is blah, blah, blah. Which was extra hard for me as an American because half of the Canadian brands I wasn't even familiar with. You knew Labatt. Yeah, Labatt, Molson. Labatt, Molson, and that was, that was kind of the uh, extent. Yeah. Uh, there was like Moosehead. I think oh, it was like yeah, Moosehead. I forgot like, that uh, was Canadian. No. Who makes Moose Slayer? Is that Moosehead? I don't know. It's a really good beer. Moosehead's I've good. had it once. But, but I should say I like Moosehead beer. Yeah, but it was great because it would be like, you know, studying for that is essentially drinking. Like yeah. you'd go through your notes and just be like, up oh, and I turned the page and I was hammered. I can't read my handwriting. I'm, <laughs> I'm going out. Um, but yeah, that was how they like trained so guess, palates. Megan was pouring the beers. Yeah. So they would they would spike us. Yeah. So they would like, you know, various kind of common off flavors and all of that. Oh. They would have like concentrated vials, but they would, you know, do our samples like they would be like, All right, we're doing like stouts today. Yeah. Here's three examples of each subcategory of stout. So here's like twelve beers. You know, they would once you kinda of go through the off flavor training, every so often they would slip one in there to make sure you were actually like you actually knew it and could catch it. The thought process of course being like once you understand what the flavors are and how to catch them, you can kind of go back and kind of reverse engineer and figure out what went wrong in production. It's, again, the feeling is very much like taking, like, a standardized test growing up when you're like, I have five C's on my bubble sheet in a row. Like, this can't be it. It's like, I haven't gotten, like, a spiked sample in, like, four weeks. So, like, it one has do. to be, yeah. Yeah. Well, something has to be coming today, and you're just kind of, like, eyeing your neighbors, like... I didn't make a face on that sample, so this sample's safe and <laughs> and all of that. But no, it was again best class I ever took, undergrad, grad, all of it. Give us a crash course. I mean that that almost sounds like that's its own full separate yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we have to come back. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, no, I, oh, no. Have, I think yeah, I think we've all reserved the right to do that with most of these yes. podcasts, basically because we figured we'd screw them up. <laughs> yes, but uh, secondarily, be way you know, better. I so, promise. <laughs> right, secondarily, we'll have more so. listeners. More than my mom. <laughs> yeah. Or my family members. I don't know. You could have a big family. I do have a big family. Well, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Now, this is our this is our favorite. No, his favorite. Well, their favorite. No, well, it was just one I thought was different from the other ones. <laughs> so okay. it's not even their favorite. So we have no idea what this well, is here's, or, uh, or means. It was, it was a short walking distance from the uh, where we could get it from. So to kind of rewind real quick, his favorite. Starburst is orange. Yes. Then <laughs> lemon. <laughs> Pink. Right. <laughs> you're, you're pink. Right. And red. That's you. Um, That's to, to kind of uh, recap, um, they're his personal favorite. He's he's a big fan of their sour line. The, the Forges, I yes. keep hearing that. Yes. Yeah, the now Forger. Sounds like a cool name. Um, which is interesting because you also said that rivals for your number one beer. And I'd like to point out, this is the first brewery that had a sour that, yeah, that would rival. be even close, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. a lot of people like the sour, but nobody's really... No, like, a lot of brewers, they'll, they'll produce a, a sour. Um, who, who, who who am I thinking? Oh, uh, oh no, that's a seltzer. Anyway, long right, yeah. Uh, seltzer, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. <laughs> Harry over at uh, Great Flats. Who, who locally had a sour? A squints. I had in the watermelon sour at... at, at um, at uh, Frog Alley, I think they're the only oh yeah, and then also the uh, the booberry um, from booberry from uh, Wolf's Hollow. So they're the only two that I can think of locally. So, but it's weird because sours have been around for a while, and it seems late. What makes a sour? It's the bacteria. Am I right? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, I mean, we got, it, an, we got an expert in right. <laughs> experts in quotes, guys. <laughs> um, no, it's so it really kind of depends on on the method so it is you know bacteria so the most common um is kettle souring which is lactobacillus yes, so it yeah. is so that is bacteria based 
Um, some of like the longer term, like barrel project, things like that, is actually wild yeast. Now, obviously, in a lot of cases, if you were to go to a larger kind of yeast lab for your, kind of your order, they would, you know, that's kind of been isolated at this point. You could also order it in terms of a what's kind of known as a mixed culture, where it's bacteria and this wild yeast. Sounds or, like kombucha. Honestly, um, in kind of in broad strokes, um, a bit similar. And then there's kind of the quote unquote like the spontaneous fermentation with uh, cool ships, which are basically, you know, these big, you know, very shallow but long. Like, boats like swimming pools almost okay. of of beer that you actually like it cools down naturally from like the a dream air, come true <laughs> but you're actually inoculating and you know getting all your yeast your bacteria that just what's naturally growing in the air that awesome. soaks in so that's just you're maximizing your surface area to capture as much as as you can so those are kind of the three so is that would ones. that be a medium sized batch like I'm sorry my phone's ringing right. uh, medium sized batch like a uh, tank if you had to maximize your surface area um, so oh no! What's the, the thing like where you the where in, so instead of knocking out directly into a fermenter, yeah. you would you would knock it out into a cool ship, yeah. um, and then depending on you know the temperature, time of year, um, what you kind of know about um, you know what's kind of going on in the air and all the currents and all yeah. of that, you know you could leave it in for a couple hours overnight, and then from there, once you know the wild yeast and everything is been settled in because it's going to be drawn to those kind of sugars that we broke down from the grain then you would put it in the fermenter yeah. um those you see kind of take i mean minimum 12 months um, wow. so kettle souring is definitely the most common and popular method where that's something you can sour in about 48 hours um it's completely safe you're not you know, exactly. Yeah, there's good bacteria, bad bacteria. It's yeah, a good you're not worry about like any sort of lac- like, infection or anything going on. What is it called? Um, lac- uh, lactobacillus. Is that from? Is, so is it from like milk or something like a dairy product? Um, you actually have you actually have uh, breweries that will use yogurt. Uh, oh wow. to, to sour, sour with. So that, that is you know that is pretty pretty close. Um, yeah, and then you know you can blend it with you know fruit. Not blend it with anything. You know. Um, but that that's definitely the common ours uh, for the now forager series. Uh, we do we do kettle sour. Awesome. Um, and as I said, we use you what's know, the time real fruit. turnaround for that? Um, I, uh, on average, it's about you know three weeks. We want to make okay. sure we give it um, you know the base beer itself is done in about kind of a standard two week turnaround. But we want to again because of the fruit. Was that an ale? Time. Yeah, yeah. So we we ourselves use it as do it a base beer as an ale. Um, and then we kind of give it just some extra time, about a week or so, okay. on, on the fruit to kind of make sure it kind of absorbs and melds together. The do way you we run into to. a, a problem of making it like, let's say you're, are you, like, is a sour kind of like walking a line? Like if you, if you're not careful, it can become so sour that it spoils. Mm. Um, is that a, is that a danger? Not so much with kettle souring. Okay. With some, with some of. Uh, these other techniques it's an absolute possibility um you just have to be very very careful um you know your your cleaning procedures need to be very very strong um so we have some of those styles uh actually out aging um at some other facilities that we had collabed with um that hopefully honestly i think probably won't come out until 2021 that are you know sitting aging in barrels and even that that stuff where we've had to kind of work with them and broadcast out wind currents from within 100 miles of all directions of the facility so i don't think a lot of people are too worried about being a two set or was it a uh, artisanal they got the uh, atomic warhead yep they have artisanal yeah they have a, they literally have an atomic warhead you remember those candies when we were kids? speaking about candies you mean atomic fireball they had a fireball but the warhead was the sour one no, I don't remember that. What? No, atomic fireball. Oh, there was this the atomic cinnamon one. one. Then they also had the sour so one. You had to take it out of your mouth. Oh my god, we're gonna have to go and get you. I'm telling you, I've never heard of an atomic. Have you heard of everlasting uh, gobs? Am I crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of warhead. I haven't heard of an atomic warhead. Well, it's war. It's the it's the artisanal makes the the warhead the, uh, but not the uh, fireball. It's atomic fireball or atomic fireball and atomic warhead. Same well, I company. Fireball. Yeah. I just Same. think of whiskey. Oh, yeah. see, no. 
No. Atomic fire. Like, I mean, not candy. good whiskey, but. Do they not make this candy anymore? No, oh, the fireball, like the red, like cinnamon, yes, whatever. But the atomic, atomic was, oh, yeah. the, was a small, it wasn't the red, the cinnamon, but it was a, the atomic warhead was the sour. The atomic fire. See, she's shaking her head. She, mm-hmm. I think you're full of it. Megan, I, I will prove you wrong. Warheads. Yes. Seriously? Yeah, I know. No, I remember Warheads, but I don't remember anything being called like an atomic. Unless it's that's just the beer name is atomic. No, warhead. well, that was the name of the candy. candy right now. You know, the candy. I, I remember I Warhead. I never heard of like an atomic, which like an atomic Warhead, which I would just assume is like an extra sour Warhead. I don't, I don't know. Super, Boom. Like super sour. Yeah. There we go. Oh, show me an image. I found a I found a candy website. Oh, you son of a gun! I don't want ten percent off. Leave me alone. Boom. All right, so. Well, this is just calling them warheads, but the extra sour warheads. Yeah, so, yeah, I like warheads. Just warheads. like the artisanal just warheads. Warheads. Yeah. Different. I'll get out of here now that I proved you wrong. <laughs> you proved nothing wrong. I'm talking about an atomic fireball is definitely way different than the warhead. Yes. Way, thank you. Thank well, you. yes, because it's, but my point is it's the same company. I don't, it, it didn't look like the same company. I'm sorry. I think you. I, I think you need to rework your home. Your there are there. people screaming at the radio right now as we speak. Not, no, nobody sees. <laughs> nobody screaming. Bill Walsh right now. Don't worry about that. Now, what is this? What is this? Oh yeah, what are we drinking? It's uh, abacus. now that I've drank all of it. That's our table beer called abacus. abacus? Yes. Like the Chinese uh, calculator. Yes. Uh, yeah. So so with this beer, um, again, as Meg said. It's our uh, table beer, so it's you know the low fours, you know ABV. As a like stylistically, table beer is pretty much what it sounds like. It's the beer version of kind of a table wine, kind of in that French Belgian region where you know back in the day when they were making this stuff, it wasn't even safe to drink water. So yeah. low ABV, very very sessionable, um, and the all the flavor comes directly from the yeast. It's honestly kind of almost like a session saison in a lot of ways, where that yeast, it's the flavor, as I said, is from the yeast, but that's it's not necessarily as, so as then pronounced. The other ingredients are mostly like just neutral flavor. Is that what you're? Yeah, yeah. So really it's mild. very, very, yeah, very mild, very, very light. Um, what you know, the what I personally like about this is we were able to work in a lot of uh, actually have some New York grown grain in, in this one, which is something that is, you know, really important to us that as, uh, you know, breweries have long outpaced um, hop yards and maltsters in terms of, you know, the lo- local area pretty much ev- everywhere. Um, so as these places start catching up, it is important. You know, we think it's important to kind of you know support the people who are trying to support us. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Um, so to be able to do that, and honestly, um, in that in a lot of ways, through their own process, as much as the way brewers, you know, could all be making the same beer. I mean, you look at beers like uh, All Together, Other Half's Project Beer. Uh, that was a fundraiser. Black is beautiful. That, that you know, let's doubt everyone can be working off the same base recipe and you're going to end up with a bunch of different beers that taste totally different from one another the the importance of working with local maltsters and local hop growers because hop growing itself is very very difficult you really can't have a product hit market Mm -hmm. um till year between year three and five of repeatedly growing hops um for and for growers that's hard enough you then also have to now predict the market of what brewers are going to want three to five years from now. And if you think back three to five years ago, much different, yeah, completely yep. different market. So they have to guess that, and they have to guess what everyone else is growing. And unfortunately, a lot of the popular stuff right now that we like um, is very difficult to grow. In the terms, all these uh, varieties are not disease or pest resistant. I've, I've in read any that. Way. I've read that that um, hops will grow well in our climate. But unfortunately, they're very susceptible to pests and disease. We have one of the best yeah. climates for it. We, we, are, we are in a good climate, but unfortunately, without work on pesticides and stuff like that, the, the, you can lose a whole crop yeah. very, yeah, so very one of, easily. One of, one yeah. of like my favorite lo- local farms that I had worked with you know, for years, the last five years, they lost the same crop year after year. After year, year, year for the same thing. And that they finally just kind of 
they said this year we lost it we're not doing it anymore which is a shame because it was you know I don't want to say like what it was or you know kind of throw them under the bus because of difficulties but it was they came up with an amazing product their other stuff is great too but that was that was definitely their highlight um, and then again kind of on the malting front um, we have a little more leeway but I think going forward that's going to be a really cool way where you can actually kind of taste where you see with wine the term terroir the local terroir, terroir yep, of yep. like local this you know grew at a local field I'm sorry so what, it, what does terroir mean again that's in, a, table in, a, wine? in terms of a wine it's it's the region it comes from so the region oh. it comes from gives it its, its particular yeah. flavor yeah, yeah, yeah well I think the same is, is true obviously for, yeah yeah for sure for hops you yeah. know in where you grow it the, the climate the you know the soil mm-hmm. gives it a certain you know flavor I yeah. guess but, but not just flavor terra you know that that term is more than just flavor it's the whole entire aroma the the body yeah all of that combined for sure so you're Style. yeah so i think especially as these places catch up because it takes so much longer for them to come online um and now especially with enough breweries there to kind of support that you are going to see from both malt and hops more kind of region regional flavors and mm-hmm. especially kind of circling back to what started this all sours where if you're you know, cap- capturing things right out of the air where it's, you know, this is all like, you know, a capital region beer that this grain was grown here, it was malted here, the hops grew here, oh, and that yeast a, was pulled right out of the air. They, what do they, they call it a farm, farm stand, farm something beer, farm whatever. I, I don't apologize. know. I'm, no, wondering, I'm wondering this though now. I guess it's more than one question. It's, it's sort of off subject. I have to use the bathroom. But, back. but we have a lot of farms in New York State and a lot of farms that aren't operating anymore you know they're out you know if you head out west or whatever you'll see a lot of fields and farms and stuff like that that are being that really aren't used anymore for farms would it be profitable for those for those farmers to maybe try to take those fields that they would have grown whatever corn or clover or whatever it is would it be profitable to the for them to try to change over to hop growth i mean like you know so i really farms are there the fields are there they got the equipment a lot of the equipment so I can't. Re- I mean, just not really knowing the financial side of that. For right. you know, yeah. farm- obviously, you know, the farmers have it have it pretty tough and work on some unfortunately slim margins, which you know that you know they they deserve better. But I don't know if it would necessarily you know make sense. Um, I mean, obviously, as a brewer, I'm biased. I would love to see more than more than that. Um, some of our uh, more recent beers that we have aging uh, right now actually has uh, two variations of ancient wheat, um, Emmer and uh, what was it Emmer and Pharaoh? Spell. Spell. Thank you. It's it's not like I run our brewery. I should know that or anything. <laughs> Let's not, um, we'll go there. But you know that, that we're able to do that, and both of those were you know New York grown. Unfortunately, they had to send it out of state to get to get malted. Um, but it's New York grown ingredients. So I think, you know, depending on the farm and the situation, the equipment to then become a maltster. And New York is starting to catch up in that front um, where they have incentivized from kind of a tax perspective, um, you know, with farm brewing license being less designated if you're brewing literally on a farm and more if you are committing to using New York grown ingredients. Um, and with that license comes, you know, tax breaks and, and, and all of that. So I think, you know, that's what I was talking about, by the way, the, yeah, uh, the whole farm, you know, using all New York farm brewery farm. Y- yeah. I mean, yeah. It's farm, farm, farm brewery license essentially. Um, so I think the state's doing a great job to, you know, incentivize that. And I think, um, you know, places are starting to change over. Um, but, it again, it's almost like a farm-by-farm farm basis of what's going to kind of make sense for each right. individual. We see a lot of that. Again, I'm going to throw it back to Connecticut real quick, which cause, just because where I'm from and prior to, you know, moving here a few years ago where I was living, um, they have a lot of tobacco. And those tobacco farms, especially, you know, anti-smoking and all yeah. of that, have kind of switched over. And they've got re- real heavy on the uh, I didn't realize they the had, the, had uh, tobacco farms up this, this far up north. 
yeah, it, Connecticut they actually have like on yeah. like certain like Cubans wow. and everything. It's Connecticut wrappers. Like, yeah. really? Oh, well, I know. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm a cigar smoker, so yes, I smoke cigars. I know about a Connecticut cut wrap, and um, I, I guess I, I just somehow contradicted myself. I was well aware of the fact <laughs> that they have in Connecticut. But yeah, fact, so it's one of my favorite wraps on a cigar. But they, you know, they're, they're not going Dutch. For- yeah, there you go. <laughs> you'll have to definitely edit that part out. <laughs> no. Is that going to be the the, uh, the next, uh, the second Pepsi challenge? Uh, yeah. Doing the, uh, the we'll flavor Dutches? Like the Dutch. yeah. We're going to do a Dutch, a Philly. Yeah. And, um, uh, this one's grape. This one's, this one's yeah. apple. <laughs> Blueberry is my favorite, by the way. You know, it's, it's messed up. Like, and I prefer a Dutch, not a Philly. But, and a blunt. A Dutch Philly blunt. There's your three. My I, no lie, my favorite cigar is a Churchill style, which tends to be like about seven, Mon- you know, seven inches long. You know about cigars? Are you talking Monte Cristo number two? Oh, I love Monte Cristo. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I um, love sandwiches. <laughs> no, it's uh, there. It's a brand. Also, um, well, I know that. I'll tell you right now. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got a handful of Gurkhas, which I don't think they Pickles? come in a, uh, in a Connecticut wrap, but Olivia makes this a Churchill is so that is one of my favorite. Style, really? Yeah. Okay. Gherkins. Speaking purely hypothetically, of yeah. course, I, you know, may or may not have, you know, prior to Cubans being allowed in the States, living and going to school in Canada, may have not have done <laughs> a decent job of being able to take some back. Yeah. And, no. You know, distribute. You failed at leaving them in Canada. They. Oops. All right. <laughs> Cops, we're at uh, Walt Whitman right now, so if you want to come down. <laughs> they're right there. I can see them. Yep, they're right hi. across the street. But here's the deal. Can, um, believe it or not, uh, Cubans, I don't think, are illegal anymore. No, no, not anymore, which happened, I think, my last year in Canada. Yeah, which means he perfectly legally brought them into this country. It means I actually had to like, it pay for school. Him, it gave him yeah. much, yeah, much more dangerous air when, he, when we thought he smuggled them over. <laughs> Now it's just some dude bringing over he cigars. He did it in the last year of school, not his first year. He's if it helps, you know, you know them and their like, ch- like the cheese that's illegal here. You know, <laughs> there's you know, cheese to- illegal here. It's uh like cool, like Quebec in particular has a lot of kind of like what I think it's just like the unpasteurized cheese, yep. like all all of that, which you can't do here. FDA is just yeah. All over. So you know, I still I still live you know totally dangerous. Nah, there, yeah. you know? It sounds like it. Yeah. Listen, I get They'll my cheese your <laughs> unpasteurized. But it's well, I actually got hop rhizomes across the border. Like I, that wasn't even like hidden. Jeez. There was like dirt in like my trunk. I heard eats cheese yeah. unpasteurized. <laughs> yeah, bro, he's a rebel. Yeah, bro, I got that. I got the Cuban cheese. I got, Not the, Cuban. I got the Quebec I got the cheese. cheese. Yes. I got that Canadian cheese. <laughs> I mean, this guy's how, down the how, block. How it's how garbage. Straight good... garbage. That's 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 craft. Poutine. Come on, man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta you gotta get the good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, no, I love poutine. I when are you gonna bring? When are you gonna start doing awesome. your own version of disco fries? That's poutine. I know. But what in Schenectady, we had we had we had uh, what was yeah, it? Brandy wine. Freezes over. Really? I won't do it. Eric's not gonna do that. No. No. Absolutely not. There's no chance. I got some Canadians I can hook you up with. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now we used to have this legendary uh, diner in Schenectady called uh, Brandywine Diner, and they had disco fries, which were insane and phenomenal. They were really good. I think, unfortunately, if and what were they for the for the listening public that's never they been were to the straight Brandywine diner artery clogging gravy fries with American cheese on them. You had me at artery clogging. Yes, so. I know exactly. It was insane. I mean, they're difficult to make. Too. Are they really? Yeah, you fry some fries and, and then some you cheese and some cheese. Yeah, gravy on there. <laughs> It's rocket science, let me tell you. But their gravy ratios, their rocket gravy science. was insane. It was good. It's it's that's their it's their cheesy version of poutine. And no they gave you um, yes, that's the reason why I brought poutine it up. Poutine is the real deal, though. See, you just don't slap no. some American cheese slices on fries. I'm a Schenectadian. And throw some gravy on there. I love my again, disco fries. Yeah, you you got to have real you cheese curds. curds. No, give yeah, me the curds. Yeah, you call them disco fries. Give so me that, some. I, I get the same way. Like, if you're going to call it, like, poutine, we're close enough to the border, I'm... I'm going to kind of hold you to it. Yeah. And saying, there better be cheese curds, no. not some slices of no. um, um, craft processed cheese yeah. product. Yeah, Land O'Lakes right on top. Whatever Thank the you hell very that much. Is. Processed cheese product. Oh, it was so good. Craft, the, craft never read the label of the fake, still on. Right, Costas, of bro, the fake open, American cheese. Reopen your family restaurant. It's not even cheese. Speaking of cheese, I got to ask you guys a question here. Um, what's the best pizza in Saratoga? Totally off subject, I know. 
You're not really afraid to go there. They can do the, like the. I mean, I'm gonna throw pizza I'm gonna mafia. Throw it to Meg. Down she's here? she's it, she's much more familiar with Saratoga than I we're am. We're getting pizza. T- we're okay, like okay, totally me not like escaping out of the equation because no, the I, are we, no, is, no, no, we can't take. You know what I'm talking about. You um, know exactly. Honestly, what I'm <laughs> there's no good pizza in Saratoga, but Esperanos <laughs> makes a decent pizza if you're drunk. But yes. it's not as good as Whitman's. Um, my favorite growing up was always Pope's, but. I haven't had it in a while. It's because I eat Pope's at like <laughs> 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> in August every year. That doesn't count. Yeah. What were you yeah. doing growing up that like their drunk pizza was like your normal? Well, Pope's, I was I close know, to the high school. Pope's, so used to be, the Pope's used to be right here. On Broadway. Right on Broadway. Oh, in okay. a barn. Yeah. Oh, like, shit. Pope's okay. was right here. I mean, it, it, <laughs> like that was where, listen, it, when you were in Saratoga, like we grew up, I'm lying, whatever. I grew up Broadway. I never had it. Tanch, my buddy Tanch used to tell you oh, all the time. Oh, you know, well, I'm older yep. now. I'm older. You know Tanch? I went to high school with him. Oh, oh, yeah, he's a good witness. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Uh, I, was, I was hoping that no. he was just like well, getting moved. after yeah, it since like middle school or something. No, like, I mean, like when you, when you were drinking in Saratoga, when you were ready to eat something, there was no other place to go. You went to Pope's and you went and you waited in line and got slices and usually saw a great fight. <laughs> or somebody getting thrown out by the. But I'm telling this not an exaggeration. No, I, I don't know think you're not. I ever went she, there. But my point is, she's saying went she there like, went there to like grow, like grow, like she grew up there. So it's just like, what what time of day are you rolling through there? Well, Pope's has been well, gone. It depends on how old I was. Pope's was yeah. Pope's was, was off Broadway. Like Pope's has been off Broadway yeah. for 15 years. The day they stopped delivering was probably the worst day of my life when I saw that. It's horrible. So now you have to go pick it up, which is why I don't eat it as much. I, I mean, I have to say, I've been up here, what, I think, th- coming up on three years now. I don't think I've ever had Pope's Pizza. Is it better well, than Pope's? It can't now, be better now, than Whitman, They though. moved it. It's now, you it's know. It's different. Up, up, up top. We what had the same thing with. It's uh, over on the west side. It is on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's okay. connected. We had the same thing. She said that with, like, oh, yeah, that's on the west side. Uh, I live on the west side. I just want to be clear. I, know, I just want to <laughs> throw that out there for the listeners. I'm trying to be Not a Philly, but a Saratoga. But, yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm getting pizza for dinner, and, uh, my fiance and Jen and I have been looking around like a place we live over on Boston Lake, so we're looking for a, a good pizza place that's within you know Whippin. reasonable driving distance. <laughs> you know, you don't want to. I don't want to drive for half an hour and then have to come back half an hour with my pizza. Yeah. So we've been looking around, and we were going to get pizza tonight. And so, out of curiosity, I wanted to know what you guys would recommend if, like, if if uh, Nick and I left here and I brought back a pizza, I would look like an all star. But I'm curious as to the pizza. My boyfriend makes the best pizza. <laughs> Call him up right now. <laughs> Tell him no, to make sure you don't edit that out. Shameless We're score plug. some points right there. Yeah, it's true. Um, Gennaro's is pretty good. I like a thin crust. Yeah, of course. But yeah, style. I mean our pizza is definitely. No, oh, I've had it. Like I, I did a shameless plug for you guys already. I think we got that out of the way. <laughs> I'm but, still saying uh, you should order like three or four uh, of those, and we should bring it back. I was with curious, us. you know, if like, yeah. let's say you, you know, let's say you're gonna grab a pie and go home. You want an eight cut? You want the, you want the traditional, you know, triangle style? What is your go to? I mean, I already know my go to in Schenectady, and everybody already knows Marino's Pizza is the best. Oh, by far. There's no second. I'm sorry. Second is, is I home apologize style. to everybody else that I love pizza wise. Actually, you should probably edit this out. Because, no, not you know, at all. Not at, Marino's. You were speaking the, the truth. Is that the same Marino's that's here too? No, no unfortunately, no. it's not. Schenectady. Yeah. Well, first of all, Schenectady's got great food. Um, but Marino's, I'm Marino's sorry. pizza. I'm sorry to is really everybody good. that I in the pizza business and Schenectady. Canales is good. Armando's. Yeah. We got a lot of good Italian restaurants. We got a lot of good like you know uh, pubs. Uh, you know. So getting back to it, like if you're going to get an eight cup pizza, you're coming home. You wanted you want your pizza from from around here. What are you getting? What? Um, this will be on the final. Yep. Does exactly. the right tomato? Does the right tomato what make is, pies? Tomato pie is different. No, when right, I want, the, the right tomato, the restaurant. No, you know what makes – no, across the street over at – whatchamacallit does. Public House does. Yeah. But yeah. their pizza – I really pizza. like actually their pizza. actually Public House pizza. I really pizza. like their pizza, but it's non-traditional style. Yeah. I'm thinking more traditional New York-style pizza right now. Like, I love – don't get me wrong. I love Public House. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, can't, I can't weigh in on this at all because I'm immediately going to be like, yeah, New Haven's better. There's it's some pizza true. place right now Wait, that's screaming at us. Connecticut? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna get. All right. What you see, it, that doesn't Pepe's? count. Like, especially since my girlfriend doesn't want me to drive into New Haven. Yeah. To get pizza. <laughs> I have a friend who lives in Windsor, by the way. So really? I'm wondering, yeah. like you say, I mean, es- I es- Esperanto's es- is es- good. Es- I like Esperanto's. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and obviously Doughboys are the shit. What's that place for? I don't. I never like that. Pl- well, I won't. Doughboys? No, I love Doughboys. They're I love the shit. Okay, and I love their pizza too. There's a place good, but like if you were getting. 
Is that, yeah. yeah. If you were getting pizza, like you said, I, I knew if I was I mean, I really like home. their pizza. What's, what's my choice? What's, what am I calling them to say? I need an eight-cut, family-style, large, you know, pepperoni and cheese. What's the best? What's the best New York style? <laughs> you got nothing? My God, you guys, you don't eat pizza? I make pizza it a, is a well, staple. I've been strictly quarantined. Yes. Making pizza at home. Oh my god, that's a terrible. See, I have been too. I've I've been smoking. Like I've been. I, I get, what I do. I have a, a smoker at home, um, and what I do is I will actually not use the the side hot box, but I'll throw the coals and the wood right on the uh, on the charcoal side, and I throw a pizza stone on there, let the heat mm-hmm. rise with it, and then I I cook my pizza right on there with the wood. It's so good. So good. See, that's awesome. That's the but the problem go. is here. I need an answer. <laughs> <laughs> pizza is a staple in our. It is. You know. If you're worried, you about, places, if you're worried about your owners hearing what you say, no. I promise I'll come. No. I just need to know. Bro, just order a bunch of pizza from here and bring it home. They're not even open here. It's Monday. or two. No, wait. It's, it's open today. Is it 4 o'clock yet? Yeah, you guys are open. <laughs> well, actually, I might do that. They're open. Okay, well, okay. But that's not my point. Okay. My point isn't where I'm going to get it from. My point was where's the sh- – I guess maybe you're right. Maybe Pope's is the way to go. It's been a while. I don't even know. I haven't, been, I haven't had a Pope's pizza well, earlier than two thirty in the morning yeah. ever in my life. Pope's, yeah. Apparently, Pope's is our uh, our Moretz. Like Wait. it's good, but it's not the same. I don't know. I'm just the saying. The shrimp and chorizo pizza from Max London's is excellent. Shrimp and chorizo from where? Max London's. Max <laughs> London's sounds I've so much familiar. There used to be a. Oh, it sounds like a steakhouse in like New York or something. It does. Oh, Peter Steele. It's like it's almost like a fashion, yeah. like fashion. Max London, <laughs> you know. I got some, yeah, exactly. exactly. Nice high heel <laughs> shoes. Check out my raincoat. Yeah, Max London, yeah, exactly. <laughs> got my Max London shirt on. <laughs> Bro, there used to be a really good uh, pizza place here in Wilton, but uh, I think it closed years ago. There used to be a plaza back in there that used to be really good. And that does zero. I know. For me right I'm now. trying. I'm trying, man. Man, See, like it, I can't believe that that like question Teresa. could go unanswered. Gennaro's. That's probably your best bet. Gennaro's. Oh, or, oh she uh, said Gennaro's Mama before. Mia's. Mama Mia's. No, that is good. Yes. I've, I've, I forgot about that. Yeah, I think that's actually where I'm going to probably stop. Yeah. Uh, they make good um, Italian dishes as well. I think I got mm-hmm. chicken parm from there. It was pretty damn good. Better yeah. than Augie's? They got Grace. That's a different story. They got good <laughs> reviews in terms of 518 Foodies or whatever it is. And I was, I was, I, I enjoyed it. And it was pretty good. But I mean... It, it's no Marinos. Everybody has a beer. I don't have a beer. I don't have a beer either. Let's wrap this up what she's on, a, on a half a beer each. One of, one of these is yours. No, both of those are yours for sure. Let's do let's yeah, do one okay. of your favorites, and then we'll wrap this up too. We got we got we got to wrap this up. <laughs> we, we're not even talking about beer anymore. Um, <laughs> Actually, that's the mo- that's some of the fun stuff. Yes, exactly. This is this it doesn't have to be a beer. Is I'm good. I'm not drinking anymore. I'm fine. He's driving. No, I'm, I'm good. Not I'm, not, I'm not drinking. <laughs> I, 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 tr- I trust you. Okay. You want an IPA? Yeah. In suspension. Oh well, yeah. It's, I, I called it what like, Galaxy because I it's not Galaxy uh, hops. It's a Vic secret. Vic secret. Yeah. Hops in it, which it honestly is known as like its nickname is kind of like Baby Galaxy. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I can tell, but it's there. It is different. It's a little sweeter. It is spicy. It does uh, it does have a spicy flavor to it, right? I mean, um, it definitely, yeah, it's, it's for sure. Which, got almost and like, honestly, almost like that's something spicy. And I honestly like that personally, yeah. Because like, there's only so many kind of like tropical fruit juice, like yeah. notes that you can really kind of like. Because you're right, it's not mango. Still, it does like, have a slight uh, 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 watermelon, not watermelon, um, slight uh, pineapple and. Uh, grapefruit. Yeah it's, like, yeah, it's like a mango pie. Yeah. Like there's, you know, thankfully there's. Thank you, Meg. There's. There, it's not there overly is, mango. There, you're yeah, right. Yeah, no, mango. there is mango that, stuff. You know that kind of keep that complexity without just you know the same tropical citrus fruits. You know, repeat where it's just over and over and over again. Um, so I mean, obviously, you know, the big three like Citra Mosaic Galaxy. You know, we'll obviously you know work with them. They're fantastic hops and they're popular for a reason yeah but again if everyone's doing it you know what's so special about yeah. us doing what's it, your right? least favorite hop Oof. um i won't go what so, don't you like to use you don't have to say you don't like it like what do you like eh, i don't really like yeah yeah i'm not you know you're well i say it's your least favorite the one that you use you know you, you try to steer away from there's a lot 
Yeah. Cascade. Yeah. Fuck no, us. I'm actually okay with uh, Cascade. It's the only one I can think of. I just of. wouldn't do it. It's the only one I can think of. I threw oh, it out there. Good. So, personally, um, so I'll, I'll say, like, my top three. Okay. And just because one of them, it's I don't dislike You're them. You're not going to get in trouble with anybody. I mean, it's not No, like, but the third, like the third one, like, the one I'll end on is, a, you know, a little bit of a hot take here. Okay. Um, Simcoe. Okay. Um, just because, and cat like, piss. yeah, you kind of get like that <laughs> onion-y kind of cat yeah. piss and really, really high dosage. Yes. Wow, that's... Um, I have to say Centennial just just to mess with Nick. Oh, oh um, it's because that's kind of continental. <laughs> that, <laughs> the con- Christopher Walken, yes. the continental. It's, it's become right. way more of kind of like a running bit here. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm fine with it. It's Still just not my favorite. Yeah. Nick loves it, and I just don't really let him use it a whole lot. Wait, no, no, there is a continental hop, right? And there's a centennial ones hop. Ones that are grown in the continental United, United States. States. <laughs> yeah, so technically there's lots of those. So technically you're right, but you're an idiot. I am an idiot. That's fine. It was centennial, one, I, I think I, I was thinking. I, but I thought yeah. I was like, wait a second, because you were like, I'm going to mess with Nick. And I was like, oh, he's messing with me. I was like, I said something wrong. I swear to God. He kept well, that. He, he well, put so that in I his actually, best pocket. He's like, oh, I'll bring that up later mess with Nick. If it, so to make you feel better um, I had it's a good friend of mine just to you know not Nick call, downstairs call him, uh, I mean Nick is very much a good friend but not who <laughs> I'm referring to in this situation um, I won't use I don't want to use names and you know kind of out, out him um, but I had a buddy who as he was coming up and now he he runs a very popular brewery um, one local of, uh, not local. Fiddlehead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ma- Matty O's a champ, so let's, you know, the the fact he sometimes will talk to me is its own thing. Um, <laughs> but this person, anyway, had kind of had hit me up and was like, oh, I'm going to use I'm gonna use Noble Hop in this. Yeah. There is no hop called Noble Hop. Oh. There, it is a like a variety. It's essentially the classification of some of like the very original hops, yeah. you know, English and more kind of European continental brewers would work with. Um, From Bavaria. <laughs> <laughs> he did not know this. He was literally out because he was like, "Oh, like what alpha? Like what? what like?" And I'm just like, "Well, what what variety are you using?" Yeah. Noble. I'm like, mm, mm. Th- "There's like multiple countries there." Um, it was very embarrassed, but so don't don't feel too bad about that one. I'm an idiot. I, I started a Second. podcast so I can drink beer. The rest of this is just you know. I like couldn't have done it before. Yeah. I was going to say, if anything, that makes you smart. So. <laughs> yeah. I know nothing about beer. I know nothing about hops. I know nothing about the brewing process. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm super impressed with Dave because we'll walk into a brewery like we did with yours. And I I think it was your walkthrough that we did prior to where we were walking through and Dave's like, oh, yeah, you use this one for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do that with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what any of these things are. They all him. say That's stout all. on them. I mean, I'm it works. <laughs> every single tank said stout on it. I thought they were all stouts. Like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> this must be their stout, oh, stout aisle. <laughs> Yeah. Only dark beers. <laughs> yes. uh, and for those who are at home who've never walked through a brewery, apparently Stout is a company. Yes, so they are a tank manufacturer. Yeah. Right. Just just to be clear. Whatever. So, but, oh, okay, so getting to, back so to, to it. But yeah, so my pizza. third. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> joking, joking, totally joking. But so I, my, will, I will require an answer before this is over. We already have yeah. like six. So, so my, thir- my third and final hop, which is a bit of my like, Arch nemesis. Hot, my, yeah, my my hot take hop here, mosaic. Oh wow! Really? I hate mosaic. Really? It's such a yeah. popular, especially locally. That's probably why. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what some makes people it a hot, some hot people take. D- don't like things because they are popular. Well, what's your top three favorites? It's I I don't I don't look at it as it's pure. It's not me trying to be a contrarian or anything like that. I so, would. it's mosaic works well as a second hop. I mean, you look at something as it's vocal bang or something like like citra mosaic citra mosaic galaxy like classic combos yeah i have yet to be blown away or really even enjoy any beer that is single hop mosaic, mosaic. it is a great number two but it can it does not stand up as kind of like a solo hop can't be a picard it's got to be a riker the other i issue- have no idea why i just came up with that <laughs> nobody will know what the hell that means 
I don't even. So I just happen to watch The Next Generation. Whenever, go ahead. The other issue with it is it actually, and again, we're we're too many beers and too long into this to go into the science Fine. of it. Um, it actually contains an enzyme that promotes beer clarity. So with everyone being on the kind of uh, juicy New England hazy, yeah. yeah, yeah, haze bo- haze bros, flock boys, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, where they love that haze, mosaic actually works against you yeah. for that. So when you're trying, and when you use mosaic, it's to please that crowd. It's yeah. to make those hazy New Englands. So for me, or like, why am I going to get excited and also pay a premium because of its name recognition for a hop that's going to fight me that I'm really not even trying to showcase? Yeah, um, it's fine. Like I said, it's a great second hop, but I'm I consider myself and very much alone in the camp of that it's very overrated yeah i don't know man uh, some of my favorite beers have some like, I'm, I'm jumping on that bandwagon are there you, you go. <laughs> i'm with you well uh, i'm gonna just because uh we got some um uh, some love from a brewer that tends to use a lot of mosaic hops such as industrial arts who are sending us a nice little care package coming up here real soon thank you a lot guys um <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I mean, gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna get excited about it till I see this package. I know. I don't know what they're sending me, and that that's again, not a term I wanted everybody to see. Mosaics, this package. like Mosaic Galaxy, yeah. it, like and Industrial Arts, great stuff, yeah. great beers. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm open to changing my mind. Someone's yeah. just got to show me a great. You're not gonna use it in a New mosaic. England style. Yeah, exactly. I, I see what you're saying. It's a, it's a good second one if you're doing like a regular IPA, but if you're trying to do a New England style IPA, it fights uh, you, yeah. and it's not it's not really the one you're gonna like show. You're not really yeah. showcasing. It's, yeah, yeah. You know, if it's a band, it's like a solid bass player. What's your top three? Top three. Um, I couldn't name six total. And why do you think you the bass player is less talented than the drummer? Or the singer, John I mean, Paul Jones, fantastic. Ooh, I mean, people well, give him no credit. He was awesome. Well, now we're. I mean, now we're just getting into like music stuff because yeah. I mean, depending. First know, answer yeah. the, the your favorite <laughs> See, your top John three hops. Okay, no. and then we'll go to the music. <laughs> uh, we are so far uh, so far over time. Hey, remember when this was going to be like 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. They're going to edit a lot of this out. Oh, we yeah, stopped. Yeah. Definitely. There's yeah. definitely things that need to be edited. <laughs> there are things that are going to be edited. Um, but not this part. It's a lot of work for me. Let's see. Yeah, um, drinking, drinking honestly, booze this, and smoking. Honestly, this answer is going to change like daily, weekly, all okay. of that. But um, right now, I would say... You're on an island stuck with a... With a Brewing it's setup. One band, it's Led Zeppelin <laughs> okay. and John Paul Jones. And you have three hops to bring with you. What are they going to be? Um, Raquel. I I love Raquel. Underrated. Not a lot of people know it. Yeah, we. I don't think we've had a beer yet. With I, he might as well be speaking Greek. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 fantastic. Um. It fits the profile for what, what kind of beers would you find that in New England? Oh, really? New England style IPA. And what kind of flavor um, uh, characteristics will it bring to the table? I'm I'm trying not to like make fun of the New England style, even though obviously Feel you free. know we we make it and all that. Well, you know it's I mean stylistically it's jump the shark. <laughs> See, I didn't do <laughs> damn it. I thought wait, you were I, se- thought, I no, thought you were setting me up for that. There you go. <laughs> I was cheering him on. <laughs> Um, Man, he opened up the door. He walked right on through. It's a lot of stone fruit, um, you know, kind of or orange tropical notes. Because the other thing that you know we obviously as kind of producers have to consider is the kind of like the average price per pound. If something's going for like thirty to forty bucks a pound, and we're using forty, sixty, eighty pounds depending on your size and scale, that's unfortunately you know cost that has to get passed down so um you know sometimes and you know we will go with some more out of the box hops or some less known obviously you know citra mosaic galaxy are less hops at this point and more buzzwords for you know instagram descriptions for people to get excited about cans so your oak hellas had this in it no 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 no, not 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 our (laughs) oak hellas um but fantastic hop completely underrated um 
I'm a huge fan. Um, You're number two. Number two. I mean, I'm kind of doing this in no particular order. Um, I feel like I'm going to listen to this podcast and like realize like how like Stop pro, right, like, like, like like German I'm going to come off here. <laughs> um, Holler Tau Blanc. Okay, it's my number two. Um, is that so, in your Oak? What is, something is in your Oak Hellas. Uh, Huel Melon. Okay. Um, so Holler Tau Blanc is I mean it's literally named after the Sauvignon yeah. Blanc grape. Yeah. Um, it. It's not even in, t- in terms of being recognized and used like a decade old hop. Traditionally, when you think of obviously, like right now, like hoppy beers, your IPAs, all of that, um, the popular hops are either, you know, America, West Coast, or Australia, New Zealand. We won't get into the whole deal with South Africa on the podcast. <laughs> um, but Germany, like, again, super old school but was kind of known as that kind of the new styles kind of pass them along very old world traditional all of that they have a fantastic hop breeding program uh going on over there and in recent years have dropped some fantastic hops that have been overlooked um hollertau blanc is definitely one i feel that has gained some more notoriety in the wake of the price surge of uh nelson solvent um and that was something that was at one point less than two years ago trading at like 40, 50 bucks a pound on the open market, hmm. which again, it's both of those are very, very kind of light, almost like gooseberry. What kind of beer white, would we find that? Like a Spaten or something? Um, all of these, honestly, just because of the price point and the oil content, are going to be hop forward beers. If okay. you're going to be willing to kind of pay that price point, you better kind of show off that ingredient. Yeah. B- bottom line. Um, it just tends to be less of a kind of orange juice okay. um, kind of port IPA and maybe more of like a pale ale or a session. Mm. But it tend- again, both of those hops tend to be white wine, gooseberry, um, a lot kind of lighter but still fruity, just less of that kind of citrus forward. Nice. Um, both fantastic hops. Nelson was really the first one that caught on. Yeah. And again, when you're trading at 40, 50 small places like us have to start looking around to find something comparable. Hollertau Blanc was flying under the radar, was still yep. very, very new, and does a fantastic job. Um, it's something that we've used repeatedly here. Um, we have our I'm So series. Okay. Um, it's our single hop series. So, yep. um, And it's one of, of the ones we've done thus far. It's definitely been our most popular, our I'm So, I'm So Blanc, which okay. is... Yeah, we, that's what we tried. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Holler Town Blanc. I'm um, so Blanc. We when tried we down Kevin's? To, no, we tried it here. We tried it here. We were here before. We were here downstairs. Um, if you were going to Instagram, you and I came here and did a, a walkthrough before we actually did the podcast. I was here, I remember. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes, you were here. Um, so that would probably be my num- my number two. It's less kind of the traditional tropical fruit, citrus over mm-hmm. the head. Still popular, still widely rated, and it's it's accessible. And honestly, I don't think enough brewers use it. Yeah. Well, hopefully they continue to not use it, so <laughs> I can get it. Yeah, they don't want to drive the price up on it. Yeah. Um. Num. My number one, I go back. I kind of go back and forth on. I really, really like El Dorado. Okay. Um, again, City and that's, of Gold? Amaretto? That's what it's, well, I mean, City that's, of Gold, right? That's what, it, that's what it's named for. It was, yeah. you know, it kind of came out in this era of, you know, finding this, you know, again, doing an IPA is this tropical fruit, this, um, you know, these orange characteristics, and it's definitely... I won't do it. I won't say jump the shark again. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's out there right now. It's been it's, out. Um, you know, I think it's gone pr- pretty mainstream, and obviously with a lot of these hops for for very good reason. But I'll put again, knowing I'm going to come off very kind of, you know, um, I I almost feel like I'm like dating myself, going like really old school with all this like yeah Germany, 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 Germany. Yeah. Um, Mandarina Bavaria. Okay. It's my favorite hop. 
Awesome. So we're going to wrap it up right here. Again, thank you so much, Megan and Keegan, for uh, having a couple of drinks with us. Dave, as always, it's been awesome. Uh, until next time. <laughs>